Blitzkrieg 16 has been. Um, for games, it hasn't been that bad. You know, we have uh, Cheeto as a president, but I mean, Titanfall 2 is okay. <laughs> there has never been a greater time to play video games. To escape from reality. To escape from reality. <clears throat> also, funny fact, actually not really funny, it's actually kind of sad. All the games that are on Steam right now, I think it's 60% of them all came out this year. Wow. Oh. That is the garbage fire that is Steam and PC gaming right now. Yeah. The pinnacle of gaming. It's like, yeah, nothing quite like playing. Like, it's really just everyone just shoving it on Steam. Just be like, charge 50 cents for this game because please, I'm a... I'm a college student who really needs money. Just buy my game. Can find me. Maybe I'm going to be the next Undertale. No one's going to be the next Undertale. And Stardew Valley, I would say, is the next Undertale. And Carlos That's also has opinions. Well, say some words so we can make sure you're. Staying. I didn't know Stardew Valley was going to be such a big thing. Oh, I thought we were just doing a cold open. I mean, kind of. All right. Well, we're on here. We're I'm sorry. Are we on what, Carlos? Actually, we didn't. We're well, on the air. Are we? I, I feel like I'm in like the hosting position. Should no, I host? No, I'm hosting. There you go. Thank you in this house. I'm editing this video. <laughs> What is this? Like, Uno rules? Excuse me, it's my rules. You keep drawing from the pile until you get a color or a number. Do you I guys mean, run into that, by the way? Yes. I hate that. What's the official weight? What's the official rule for Uno? But when you wait, you don't, if you don't have a card, you keep drawing. You keep drawing. What's the rule? Do you draw one and that's it? No, you keep drawing. Okay, obviously. good. Okay, because, we're all good friends. Because Uno is just there for chaos. Like. Okay. This is the official Uno podcast. <laughs> I was going to say, I love the second you realize you weren't hosting, you're like, okay, let's just take this right off the fucking rails. Excuse you, you Mr. I still host and throw everything out of the rail. 2016 game of the year, Uno. <laughs> <laughs> so, um... Wait, the Xbox Live version, or... Oh, oh yeah, God. I forgot that thing. With the actual version. live camera, and you can look at people's reactions, and then there was, like, people dressed as Spider-Man, like a fucking lost, fucking draw for Spider-Man. Piece of shit. Of course, the worst. So despite, okay, Green so despite that opening, this is the 2016 Game of the Year podcast. Uh, it's almost over, Nick. <laughs> Don't say that. Someone going down today. I know. <laughs> Carrie Fisher is dead. It's probably your and her mom. His mother died of a broken heart. Really? Oh, you yeah. didn't hear about she this? had dead dove disease. She got a stroke. Oh my god! Literally, well, we don't know what the stroke was, but pretty much died of it. Anyway, let's talk about some video games. <laughs> not, not a, there's never been a better time to play video games to escape from your life, everyone. So, um, yeah, this is technically Donna Laser Podcast Episode 7. I'm really happy because I called the last one Episode 6 as a joke because I didn't think we did 5. So I was just I was trying to skip it, and then I looked back and I was like, oh, we did have a 5. Wait, this, so this isn't a joke. This is just a normal Since this number. is Episode 7, is this a Game Awakens? Anyway, um... That was a good what, joke. What do we consider this the best in the series? Why? What? Seven, best Final Fantasy. Oh. It was a bad joke because we technically haven't gone beyond seven. So It's a newer hope. So yeah. when I said, hey, let's record, you guys were like, oh, let's not bring the comedy. Yeah. No, okay. We're, no. This is all so, high-brow jokes. The three, yeah. Is this our Rogue yeah. One? Is this a complete... Is this a prequel to the previous episodes? So the three of us have lists. The 2014 um, Game of the Year. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to go with 2015, but I accept that. So, I'm just going to read out the categories. Um, some of them have subtitles, some of them don't, because sometimes we're lazy and sometimes we're not. Um, the first title is, Carlos was right, top game not from this year that you went back to, and it's still bad. It doesn't um, have to be a top game. It just has to be a game that you attempted to go back to it, and find the enjoyment that I think he means about. top is in the worst okay. that you went back to, and was like, nope, this is still shit. Um, called the Carlos was right award. The next one is, best game not from this year, that you played and loved. So basically, it's kind of like catching up. Past Relic. Past Relic. I'm going to read it after. I didn't, you have uh, to put yeah. the title first and then the subtitle. Yeah. I'm revealing the, the title after That's the like subtitle. telling me the plot before giving me the title of the movie. I'm okay with that. That's like if they announce Best Picture and they go, this is the greatest film that came out today. Best Picture. No, it's Best Picture. And that then still they... sounds fine. No, that doesn't sound actually, fine. Actually, that does actually sound no, fine. So your, example, <laughs> your example is the reason I say it this way. <laughs> All right. Anyway... So, uh, the next one is a good game that came out this year, needed more development to make it great, more time in the oven. Uh, then we have worst game, subtitled to come. We have best gameplay, subtitled to come. We best should... story, subtitled to come. <laughs> out of, and then out of nowhere, best game release that this that beat your expectation or game moment that surprised you. Um, and Brought then... to you by Randy Orton. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Spoilers, then... <laughs> actually, on the website, I actually have the GOATs, the, you know, the GOAT awards and everything like that. It's Randy Orton, just RKO, the GOAT. 
And then we have the Go80, the uh, greatest of all time this year. So the best game of the year. Uh, I feel like we should call like the worst game something else. Like, uh, do you guys bring want, up the booty hole? Do you guys want to ban for like an hour, or should we just start? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> All right, run it back. Surprise! Run it back. To, <laughs> I'm saying we should come up with fun names for each of the awards because we got Goaty with a fun name. I think last year we did, didn't we? We Every, did. Everything we put, had like its own stupid put title. Far more effort into last year's than this one. That is true. You had like a month preparation. There was an Excel sheet. Like, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. There was like twenty different awards. The worst game of the year award it will go to it will be now called the Nickelback Game of the Year Award. <laughs> Sorry, can you, I just I just watched you pick that fruit up from the floor, not even low hanging fruit. <laughs> I was I was more laughing because of that. Like that is like the lowest easiest dig you could possibly do. So, um, oh lordy. Let's start off with a statement that's not often true. The Carlos was right award. It really should be the Carlos was originally right award. But anyway, I should feel I'm going to go last because my point, my pick's already. Because I'm giving this to Batman Arkham Knight. We are, you can watch the last year's episode where that game just sucks. You know, I, the I've tried that game three times now. It's just not good. Well, there you go. Carlos already went. It's Arkham, yeah, it's Arkham Knight. You explain. You're like, you're like I'll go game. last. Anyway, so the game I picked. <laughs> oh man, that game is like. Since a, you went first, do you want to just go into it? Yeah, that yeah. game is like, that game is like an ex girlfriend that you keep on giving another try to love, and she just don't love you back. Arkham Knight just sucks. I don't know why everyone tries to say it's good. It's bad. Stop lying to me, white America. <laughs> what particularly? Why it's, did you want to go back to it? To like, because everyone kept on telling me like it was the pinnacle of the series. People gave it tens. People gave it tens. So I'm just like, what am I missing? There's got to be. I love Arkham Knight. I love Arkham Asylum. I even played uh, with the the fucking one that Rocksteady didn't even make, and I was like, I love this Origins? too. Origins. Yeah, Arkham Origins. I love that game too. So I'm like, There's, I'm missing something. So I got to give this another try. Maybe I just came at the wrong way. Arkham Knight was like, No, Carlos, you came at the right way, and this game still sucks. Dude. But Carlos, the Batmobile. Fuck the Batmobile. I just, <laughs> oh god, it's just so it's bad. It's Go back to my last year rant, because that's a 20-minute me of just master, master being Tom. This is why we needed it on video. Just, <laughs> that's why I wanted to actually record this, so you actually get the full full moment. I think it's better to imagine movement. it. Whoa, I almost have like an aneurysm there. Sorry. All right, who's going now? Oh, we have to have like an established order. This okay. No, so we don't. I prefer when it's chaos and random. Well, that's fine. That's, what, I'm, not being, I'm not being sarcastic. I do prefer that. Do you want the Rochambeau for the next one? Or? No, I just like it. When, I'd rather not kick each other in the nuts. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> you can go. So mine's actually a little. So here's the funny thing: the last podcast. <laughs> oh, man. That is a good one. All right, shut the fuck up, Nick. Right. The last time or the last episode, I preferenced saying, "Oh, this was going to be my Carlos was right. It's a game that I really went back to and season pass, blah 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 blah." And you guys were like, "What's the game? What's the game?" I'm like, I'll tell you afterwards. And afterwards, I told you it was the division. Where the funny thing comes in is I bought the season pass because it was like 10 bucks, which is normally, it's, I think it sells like 40. I'm like, you know what? I'll buy it. And I jumped back in and they had all this patchwork done. I think I was at 1.2, 1.3 when I stopped. So now it's at 1.5. And apparently 1.5 just took the entire game and just turned it around. So all the looting is better. The guys are still a bit spongy, but at least they go down a little bit quicker. And you still shoot a guy like 800 times in the head. If he's like an elite guy, he still doesn't die. But there's a whole bunch of balancing stuff. The DLC is actually okay. It survival mode is actually fun. It's I've like heard a, good things about that. It's really good. It's it's one of those like you have to pick things up, make sure you know watch your bars and everything. But it's not like very managing where you're like if you have to do this bar and they maybe can juggle this and everything. It's like hey, you're cold. Don't be cold. Go next to a fire. Get a hat. You know, like the things your mama taught you to do. Okay. Also, she said don't play with guns, but get guns because other people are gonna come kill you. Um, and they add a lot of things that make you want to come back. Like they just had a couple of dailies that weren't really that good. Now the dailies actually make sense. Uh, the game doesn't rely on crafting, but now if you craft, it's a lot better. So it's, this is pretty much my anti pick for this. The one that actually I had to think about uh, to basically make you know, a thing for this, uh, uh, winner per se, if we want to call it that, uh, evolve. <laughs> You went back to Evolve. I went evo- back to Evolve because the curiosity got the better of me because they recently oh, went free yeah. to play earlier in the year with Stage 2, as they called it. They rebranded it. I played the betas, 
And I'm like, okay, yeah, this is pretty cool. I think I got everything I need to get out of it though. And a friend of mine who bought it confirmed that. He goes, yep, if, I mean, there's more content in there, but it's pretty much the same 4v1. I love asymmetrical team-based games. I love team-based games anyways. Uh, I'm one of those rare people that like, we can do it together. And some guys just like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, yay team. As long as they're not a grill and everyone go, grill, grill. But that's besides the point. It's, it, I went back to it. I gave it a shot. It's not really filled a bunch of free-to-play things. I really wanted to like it. And it's like, nope, it's the same thing. It's the exact same thing. You play a couple matches and you're like, yeah, good. I'm done. I'm out of here. So like everything, I was actually going through my Steam list. So, I'm like, everything else was, I'm like, oh, you know, that one was actually still okay. And everything, like, but was it bad as Evolve? Like, quote, unquote, nah. Was that as bad? No, but it's not Evolve, though. It's not, it's not the same shit. It's not the same old shit. That's okay. pretty. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Dead air. <laughs> no, it's not, it's so this one I had to grab for because I thought Division was going to be on a lock, and now that I played, I'm like, you know what? You're okay. You did good. It took some time to get there, but you should play the Division, Nick. I'm downloading it uh, as we speak. <laughs> so um, that's not me. Again, not me being facetious. It's currently downloading on my. Yeah, PS4. I know. But you could have just told me we could have. I I don't have to download mine. But anyway, that's conversation for after. Um. So mine is going to go to. Uh, Little known game made by a little known developer. Uh, it's from Naughty Dog. It's uh, Jack Two. It is a uh, hot garbage. So Jack and Daxter, amazing platformer, collectibles, all that good shit. Very colorful, vibrant, just really inspired levels. And then we get to Jack Two, which is like, hey, Grand Theft Auto is popular. What if we did that? And it's like, I don't have a problem with the premise. Like, fine. Jack is edgy now. It's like 2003, 2004. Times have changed. Got a tailored to your audience. 2002. Literally a year before what I said. <laughs> Fucking forgive me. I'm just saying. That changes everything. Um, Play City came out next. <laughs> and, um, and, I was, and I remember... So I played on PS2 and I remember liking it. But then I played it as an adult on PS3 and I was just like, this game is terrible. And uh, I was just like, it's so badly optimized. It's like, hey, you know that 20-minute mission? If you fail at minute 19, you have to restart again. Ha, ha, ha. These missions, they're tough to, you know, make. Sorry. So uh, I have the Jack collection on Vita. So I was playing Jack 2 at work. And I was just like, wow. This is just as bad, if not worse, than I remember. Because now, they didn't even optimize it for the uh, Vita. Mass Media did a terrible fucking job. And, um... Just said, like, oh, yeah, so if you drive the car and there's, like, a couple things going on on the screen, it may just drop down to 15 FPS. You know, if that's what people want in this kind of thing. It was jarring because I was jumping back and forth between Ratchet and Clank and Jack. Ratchet and Clank works fine. So when I would play Jack, I would, like, after playing it, I would get, like, kind of sick. I'd be like, ah, this doesn't feel right. I'm so sluggish. Ah, ah. So it's, uh... It's absolutely the worst thing I've played this year uh, for replaying games. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I had to reach for this uh, so this year. Because normally I steer away from games I know are going to be bad. To be fair, I didn't actually I reach, reach into the, the classic bin. If I pulled it, if I went way back, like because I play classic games and arcade games usually like once a week or twice a week um, on stream. And there's actually, now that I think about it, there's only one game that I would say it's it's already bad as it is the DuckTales version of the GBA only because of its sound. The sound literally sounds like the devil screaming at you through a mono speaker in a bit. I will show you later. It okay. is amazing. It is terrifying. Do you see that video of the new cast of the DuckTales like reboot? And they're all just singing and they're all really bad at singing for the most part. Yeah. Yeah. It's more of just a, re a reveal of who the cast is. Oh. And then David Tennant the Doctor mm. as Scrooge McDuck and I just melted Don't a little say that he's the Doctor he is the Doctor Matt Smith he's my Doctor, doctor. <laughs> he's my Doctor too damn it so that's um, so that's the Carlos Was Right Award you're, you're right Jack 2 is an awful game you're right Evolve is an awful game <laughs> I'm not comfortable you're with the right Arkham Knight is an awful <laughs> I'm game I'm not comfortable with the Jack 2 slander but I, I'll say Evolve is a bad game alright so uh, we'll be right back after this commercial break oh man those guys are crazy all right, so um, our next one is uh, Past Relic. Best game from not this year you played and you loved. So the reverse of the Carlos is Right Award. Um, you want to go first? This time, Rock Band 4. 
Really? What the fuck? Rock Band 4. I didn't know there was a fourth one. There is. It actually came out last October. It was a shit show. It, because the tracks that are on the CD, kind of okay. But when you have a library of DLC, when you do every single week, you're kind of digging mud out of the water well at that point because you've pretty much put every good song, quote unquote, rock album or rock song in your library already. So you can't really put one on a mainstay disc. Also, they're working with a lot of quote unquote indie money, I would say, because they didn't have the same kind of power behind it because it's a rock band for And you couldn't download the DLC at least very easily in the beginning when it came out. So my sister and I loved rock band. We got together, we played, she came over my apartment. We couldn't even play it. Besides the microphone being a little bit weird that we had, but we tried to download some of our favorite songs off of our old DLC list, and it was just a shit show. So then, to abridge that, came home uh, one day, and I was like, there's nobody at home. I have a little confession. I like to sing. Sometimes I sound like a coyote in a trash compactor, but I don't care. But what, how do you sound when wait, you're singing? So, wait, you, play rock, you sing on Rock Band? Yeah. But you're the only band. person I've ever met. I actually like to sing on Rock Band, even though I don't think I'm a good... So people are like, oh, yeah, you're fine. I'm a little upset that Carlos ruined my jokes. I'm just going to repeat it. But Coyote and a Trash Compactor. But how do you sound when you're singing? <laughs> 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 See, I heard it the first time. I just chose uh, to ignore it. Uh, it's Nick, like, good for the, you're good for the callback. You're so funny, good Nick. I know, Nick. Uh, uh, but they've added, actually, uh, they've done a few patches here and there and made it a little easier on top of everyone trying not to download all the songs all at once when the game comes out. And I just like me some Rock Band. And I went back to it and I just started belting it out. I actually finished some of the career mode, got some of those trophies. And after the career mode, I was like, I'll just keep on singing. So there was one day, one Saturday, I probably played for about four to five hours, just singing, belting out some tunes. And then my throat was absolutely killed. It was, I, yeah, I saw both of you like penis stroke, penis stroke. No, I'm, 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 just more, I'm just thinking of like you singing in your house for four to five hours. Yeah. And like your family walking in and out and like, yeah, Spencer's got his own little concert going on right now. And oh, like, no, they know. Yeah. If Kaylin came home, she'd be like, what are you doing? I'm playing. Oh, she's like, are you playing Rock Band? I'm like, yeah, I'm playing Rock Band. Like, oh. Or she might even like, so what so was the guitar? I have the original Rock Band 1 guitar. We originally tried to boot up Rock Band 4. It was a shit show trying to calibrate. The more and more TVs get more and more modern, unless you have, like, the, you like manually do it, and even then it's absolutely crappy, the newer ones have a thing where you can hold the guitar up to your television, and it will listen to the beats, and it will automatically calibrate for you. But since it was an old one, it was just... Uh, that I, can't, I can't even think of an analogy right now. It's just so complicated. <laughs> but no, I wasn't thinking of a penis joke. I was like, I don't think I've ever heard you with your voice gone. That would be an interesting experience. It just sounds really raspy, like a like everyone else who loses their voice. Like a yes. South, no, like a South Boston grandma who smoked a pack every single day. I'll go to the store. Yeah, I'm gonna get my mobs. <laughs> <laughs> get a pack of marble sil- silver. That's pack. a local joke. I mean, I think Marlboro's transcend thanks to Philip Morris. Who uh, is sponsoring this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> Finally got that mom for a Gonna get that tobacco <laughs> money. We in the big pockets, boys. All right, since we gotta mess up the order, I guess we gotta go next. Um, so, Spencer just sounded really fucking lame. Am I right, Carlos? You're right, you're right. Uh, so, my favorite game that I went to that was not released this year was uh, Steins Gate, a visual novel on Vita. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Just reading through the story. Just Why clicking the f- away. Hot, wait, How I watched did you get the, it. I, I uh, PlayStation Plus. No, it was just I think I bought it because I'd heard such good things about it. Was it good? And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. Just was basically just like reading a book with voices at you know I do it at work, and to the point where I'd go home and I'd play even more. Like which is very not rare, but it happens like once in a blue moon on Vita games. So um, yeah, really good story available on PS3 and Vita or in anime form. Uh, <laughs> I really, really enjoyed it to the point where I beat the quote unquote game and then I was like, I, but I'm not, that, I'm not done with these characters. That ending wasn't good enough for me. And I was just, I, I like, it broke me a little bit. And I was like, there's a true ending. It's like, I need this. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't, I, I can't move on until I get this true ending. And then I got the true ending and I was like, all right, <laughs> I can, I can say move on to the point. The game was so good, I couldn't really find another Vita game for like a month after because I was just like, nothing is scratching this itch. The nothing is like novel itch or just no, like nothing that. is scratching like that story itch of like mm. that 
such like a complete sense of like like completion i guess where it just like it all it was all re- well rounded i felt satisfied when i beat it it was just like i can't remember the last time i beat a game i was like yeah that was a good that was good whereas like usually it's just either like okay i'm done or um or you wanted more but i was just like no that's whew. a sequel for it actually came out and i haven't bought it yet because i'm cheap and i'm gonna wait until it goes on sale zero yes uh you so you watched the um, anime a little bit, didn't you? Yes. I think you watched it all the way through and didn't remember a single fucking thing Nope, because I watched it so long ago. <laughs> I, I, there was a time when I would just blow through anime. I would just like watch it and I'd watch it in the background and just kind of listen to it. And this is a victim of that. I, yes, it was probably one of those because you were like putting moments in there. I'm like, I don't remember that. And there was one where you're like, oh yeah, there's a cat girl cafe. I'm like, oh, there's, there's not a fucking cat there's girl cafe. And I went back into Google, like there is, to- it is amazing. It is a, it is I did a- not watch this show. <laughs> they go there several times. Yeah. <laughs> so, the, so I was like thinking like, is the, is the anime different from the visual novel? From what I understand, it's pretty uh, faithful to it. It so. is very fit- From what you've well, been telling me. And to then- a point, because there's like different um, paths you can take. Very little, mm-hmm. like you can like make a choice and then like, see like a bad ending after like a little bit or like an alternate ending but nothing like majorly affecting the story mm. it just it, it omitted those alternate endings that's all um but then there's a movie after that touched upon it a little bit in flashbacks where he's like i have memories i don't remember and he, it would like show clips of like the alternate endings which weren't in the anime so people watching it would have been like that's weird that never happened but me mm. playing the game was like <gasps> i remember they this did it. Um, so this yeah. Is the lame- How did you outlay him? <laughs> First off, fuck you. But yeah, you said you wanted to read more, so I recommend it. Anyway. You actually, if we had a best visual novel, um, we actually don't even have a best story. Now that I think about yeah, it. Yeah, oh, yeah, we do. We talk. Ooh, about it. Oh, shit. Oh, no. You can oh. change it. We haven't gotten to that. Uh, this, I might, this might be another one, another category. I might have to wing it. Like, wing it. We'll see. Because I'll talk about two of them and then we'll I'll, I'll play it in my head. But uh, Valhalla is a visual novel game on PC. Yeah, I'm uh, not going to play it. Um, it's super that, nice. That's fucking stupid. Visual novels, novels are stupid. You just play a visual novel. I, I call it I'm going to be a about We this. have it on recording. Uh, that's fine. It's, I, there's exceptions to the rule. Um, Cyberpunk Bartender Simulator. With talking corgis. Wait, what? I just... What seems up my No. <laughs> <laughs> it was a break from my character, not a permanent one. Um, Carlos. One day I'll be right. I know we argued about this in the car, but I'm going to say it anyway. You know, with the handsome collection from Borderlands. Can, I, you, can you nominate an entire collection? Here's the thing. He's okay. Let me put it this way: He is not nominating the pre-sequel. <laughs> he, is absolutely, <laughs> he is absolutely only talking about Borderlands Two. I don't know why you said the handsome collection because t- you're, you're not talking about the pre-sequel. You know it. Or one. No, one. It's, it's only bo- two in the pre-sequel. Really? Yeah. yeah. Weird, right? The handsome collection is only yeah. two. Yeah. The one handsome Jack appears in. It, it's like having like the Star Wars collection, the original series, but having two and three. <laughs> Or like having five and six, which is arguably a better collection. Oh, actually, yeah, I went, I went the other way. I actually said the original series <laughs> oh, and then went to the crappy new ones. <laughs> Woo! All right, dyslexia, also, let's go. Also, to be clear, you can watch in the original, if you omitted the Phantom Menace, that's still a better collection. That's true. Than having it with the Phantom that Menace. That is true. You wouldn't really understand. Actually, you probably could get rid of the Phantom Menace. Now that I think and about it, make, it. and it would still collection. make sense. Yeah, huh. but now you have to change because. I haven't seen Rogue One. You shut your okay. fucking mouth. Yeah, we, we saw it a couple minutes ago. <laughs> the woman is beautiful. I'll say that. She is. She has a nice butt. Yeah. Um, I was get. I played so much Borderlands this year. Like, I think that I actually. It's like FIFA and then Borderlands of all things. Because one, I played it by myself, and then I played it with my roommate all the time. And I love the DLC packs they have on it. Fuck up. See again, if we had we were recording this visually, everyone would be on right. the joke. He was why did Car- why did Carlos tell him to shut the fuck up? But we'll I leave know. I leave jokes in for myself, so like I'll hear that and I'll be like, I know why I'm not. That's not the point though. It is to you me. Sound like that's not how this works. Old music. <laughs> that's not how any of this works. <laughs> you just listen to your old lust plays and be like, damn, this is a good joke here. Oh man, hey, this guy is so out. good. Oh, actually, he's, he's the next markiplier. I actually can't listen to my own lust plays because I know I'm already a narcissist. And I totally could just leave my own Let's Plays on from like two years ago and be like, this guy's bringing up some interesting points. This is some dope jokes, y'all. <laughs> yeah. It's like, this guy has my exact sense of humor. It's like the guy who gets, you're going to start saving these for audio files. So and like, I, picking so I me can't up. do it. 
Peeing up in the car, just like, yo, check out these dope jokes. I'm like, <laughs> I know who's talking right now. Borderlands but, 2. But back to Borderlands 2. To be 2. fair, I can watch the ones with other people because I can like justify it. It's like, I'm listening for them, probably. Granted, I wanted, I was tempted to give it to Persona 4, but I didn't finish Persona 4 because it's a long book. And you keep not playing it. That too. That's uh, that's the big reason. And then I, I really enjoyed Borderlands 2. The pretty sequel can eat my asshole, but <laughs> 2 is really good. 2 is a solid game. Um, I platinum it on PS3 earlier this year, so I will stand by it and say it still holds up really well. All right. I'll read the next category, because fuck you. Uh, the More Time in the Oven Award. I, I'm the host. Nah. This is the More Time in the Oven Award, a good, good game that came out this year that needed more development to make it great. Brought to you by Dizani. <laughs> Dasani, not <laughs> the fuck is Dasani? Is that some I brand of car? I don't know. Dasani. That's whatever. It's not a real word. But Aqu- it's an brought to you by Aquafina. <laughs> You're not even drinking. It's like if it's, if it's sponsored by Coca Cola and then you drink a Pepsi on stuff. Brought to you by Evian. Uh, Evian, because you hate poor people. <laughs> um, brought to you by Fiji Water. <laughs> brought to- Smart Water. Brett anyway, to, speaking uh, of not wet uh, things, more time in the oven. Let's bring, flip, bring we need to be baked. baked. Brought to you by Zima. We don't exist anymore. I had to do it. All um, right, what was your... Uh, so, uh, I'll go first. We didn't talk about this one. Mine was uh, XCOM 2. I love XCOM 2 to death. It improved on everything the first game did, uh, from story to gameplay to like downtime and stuff like that, to like the crafting and everything like that. I love almost everything about it more. But the longer you play the game, like the longer a save file is, the longer the load times get. And they're already pretty rough. And it got to the point where I was waiting like three minutes Wait, each, what? Minute, each mission. That's like, some fuck shit. I'm Especially be, with a game where it kicks you in the balls and tells you to restart or you yeah, want to go load a save back. That was the other thing. It's like I know that, you know, save scumming is bad and stuff like that. But my first playthrough of any game. You know, I'll reload saves and stuff to Fuck save it. my characters. We ain't ready to judge you. That's your life. No, I'm, I'll agree with it. Like, to the point where it's like, I mean, I'm kind of defeating a huge por- point purpose of the game, which is permadeath. Yeah. Um, but every reloaded save took really long. And I'm just, and every, like, loading screen. A lot of people were saying, you know, eventually if they make a patch for it, then that'd be great. But uh, Fire Axis or 2K, whoever has control of this, doesn't really have a good track record of that. Um, like there's still a game or just consoles in general because they went PC you played on PS4 right yeah yeah. That, they were like so gung ho PC and even then yeah, it was still I, don't, it don't be wrong I'm glad just to have had the option to play it mm-hmm. um, and I probably could like finish it if I just you know like stuck with the load times but on podcast in the background maybe game of the year 2016 Dino Laser Podcast episode 7 but um how could you listen to it then but it's the, it's a prequel this is a prequel. are you the moving, doctor moving forward I maybe could do it um, but yeah, I, it's, it was, it's tough. It was tough to like uninstall that to make room for other games. So I was just like, I was lying to myself, telling myself I was going to go back to it soon. I just like, I couldn't do it. Mm. Um, so if they patch it or something, then maybe, but for now I'm just kind of like, I, I So can't. you told XCOM you were going to go milk, get milk at the store and just never came back? I told I was going to buy cigarettes and I haven't come back. <laughs> wow. Um, for but somebody yeah, that really just hit home. But that's a, <laughs> good. <laughs> Glad I could touch upon your life, um, Carlos. Oh, but, <laughs> oh, yeah. I thought that was actually throwing it to me. You're black. You have an absent father, right? No, I'm, I. That, yeah. Wow. Look at what that terrible man Damn. does. <laughs> no, because I met. We're his never gonna get sponsored now. No, I met his father. His father annoys the fuck out of him. This his, man set the heat to turn off when he goes to sleep and only turn on when he comes back from work. That's a dad thing. <laughs> yeah, no, but like, he doesn't change it when I'm home, so I'm just like, can I change it? He goes, are you paying for heat now? <laughs> so now I'm just like, now I'm on his sleep schedule. <laughs> See, I love Carlos's dad, which is why I want to make that joke, because I knew he'd come back at it. Like, you know, an absent father wouldn't be that bad. <laughs> um, Maybe not having a strong father figure wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. <laughs> But anyway, so um, yeah, XCOM Two. I really, really enjoy it when it works, and I just wish they had just like spent more time developing it mm. uh, or porting it. I guess in this case, uh, maybe developing. I don't know what it's like on PC. Carlos, you're up. All right, I'll go with Mafia Three. Initially, uh, actually, I'll say that role for the next game. Mafia Three to me doesn't feel complete it literally doesn't feel like they for, feel like they forgot to put the game in the game like they have some great story sections they have uh 
But you only get those story sections by doing what, like, to me, feels like a, you're doing a bunch of side quests because they forgot to put main mission quests in it. Yeah, or... so I you told me about this a while back. Would you compare it to, like, the original Assassin's Creed where it was, like, you'd have to go into a new place, do a bunch of, like, bullshit stock missions you've done before, and then you'd get, like, a story mission that was, like, different? Yes. It's exactly so like that's, that. that. That's weird for a game that came out so long after that. To, like, yeah, and, it. like, the story is really good, so I'm just like, y'all really could have put some meat up in that potato like there's nothing on the bone like you literally there was to me i was like there's a lot of hope for this game if they literally just i would even say give it two years it's just like let's come up with some really fun and interesting missions rather than like it literally felt like i was like doing busy work so when i was like let me put this game down and i'm like now nah, i'm almost done with it and then i beat it and i was like i was the good did not outweigh the bad and it was very close to being put on the worst games list mm -hmm. but i was just like i don't think I just thought of this. Mafia 3, is that also published by 2K? Yeah. 2K is getting a bad rap right now. Maybe pushing their games out a little sooner than they need to be? I do think that was the problem with Mafia 3 because, like, they didn't have anything big lined up for this year. So they were trying to get that AAA, like, money sales. It's because they didn't have GTA 5 to rely on. Wait. 2K what? doesn't no, do no, no, GTA. No. Oh, and that's uh, <laughs> GTA 4 that they used to work around with. No, it's Take yeah. 2 that does. Take that's 2. Oh, that's Take 2. That big conglomerate that owns uh, Rockstar. I thought Take 2 also had 2K. No. Whatever. Oh, no, no, 2K is 2K16. I don't know why the hell they're rushing on games. I don't know. Sports games are like a license to print money. Yeah. Especially NBA 2K. That's like always top five best-selling games each month, and that's ridiculous to me. That's Who true. the hell still buying basketball when the new 2K came out <laughs> Like, even FIFA yeah. drops, but anyway. I buy FIFA every other year yeah. for that sole factor. Even though, actually, the funny thing is that you say that you're talking about FIFA, a friend of mine just texted me saying, yeah, he's like, oh, the story mode's so great. The, what, oh, yeah, the, mode? yeah. He says, it's great. And then he got to the last season, or the end of the season, and he goes, fuck this, it only goes to one season. <laughs> but yeah, uh... Speaking of, speaking of FIFA, you should watch the uh, FIFA 12 Let's Play. No. You can find that in the new Great Big Playlist of Friendship, which has all co-op and all collaborations, all in one handy playlist, right on the main page of Wrath of Zaylus. Check it out today. Fuck that. That was the most narcissistic thing I've probably ever seen you do on this podcast. I took like a solid 30 minutes making that playlist. I want at least a couple extra views for those videos. <laughs> all that work to shine. Uh, if we had, on, on that note, if we had a... I was actually listening to Giant Bomb. They had a please stop, basically something oh, yeah, they, tell, that. they tell the industry to like stop doing. Uh, I think it was their number one. My brain's kicking out. But basically shipping a game that they, it goes gold, you know, so they can but do this big press patch. release, but it needs a giant patch. And I put out that stupid clap tweet, but it was like the only one I've ever done, or is don't ship games that aren't complete. I hate it. I don't want to download a day one patch when I get a buy a disc version of your game. It's a well, oh that game also had a lot of terrible bugs. Well, let <sighs> me just let me say about the day one patch thing. I have nothing against day one patches. I don't think they should release a game going it's not done. We still have time to work on a patch. I think if you finish if you complete the game it's done, and then as after it goes gold you discover a couple bugs, then you do a day one patch for it to only make it better. That's fine. Like we live in a world of technology. Like let's utilize it to to like say like, only go so far. To, but that's what I mean to say like oh it's okay to go gold now because we can just like throw a patch out. That's not okay. And that's no, that's what it's happens. The defining, they, it's we the need to serve line, these now. discs right now. We can get this on the back end. And there's a whole, we've I think we've discussed this before where there's a whole bunch of factors in terms of yeah. there's now data caps and there's people don't have this bandwidth. Like we like in America we're privileged fucks where well, we, we can we for the most part we know these. <laughs> We don't live in the flyover states, so we don't give a fuck. But um, no, no, not even the flyover states. We live in a place where we, for the most part, unless you have like Comcast, but even Comcast is like a terabyte a month, and even then, they're like, hey, stop it. But like every other country, I actually, wrote to the in FCC the world. about that. I good wrote to the you. FCC complaining good about for, Comcast. Good for you. Comcast sent me back a letter saying like your area doesn't even have data caps. Like why are you like? Who cares? About this? Uh, yeah, I don't give a flying. It's like because you're wrong. <laughs> yeah, but like every other country has it. Every other country has it, and when you're pushing out, like I put in Battlefield One. And there was a 40 gig patch and then it downloaded another patch right after that one for about you know like only 100 meg that's not okay but no it's not and hardline i'm really? not gonna have hardline was before the consoles also kind of suck at downloading shit especially ps4 or psn the psn yeah. like steam steam like actually downloads things faster than it my hard drive can write it 
And uh, I actually remember hearing, I don't know how PlayStation works. I remember hearing a podcast a long time ago, uh, back with the 360 infrastructure, where um, if multiple people were downloading the same thing, it would actually increase download speeds because they optimized it. So like whatever like was being the most like demanded, that's what they would like allow the most like bandwidth or something. I don't know if PSN allows something similar, but I know it Xbox. Doesn't. <laughs> I, I know Xbox works really hard on that. Xbox works on that. Steam just has deals with every single ISP where they have just channels. That's why, like Dota Two, you will never time out in a region that you have. You know, well, it's it's the it's some, one of the few benefits of uh, PC gaming. PC, PC gaming, but no, the PSN does not because it's almost like there's one server that has like one game. So, if, like for example, when Destiny came out. You uh, keep oh, going back to this. It was the worst. It's the one time that I said, I hate this future where we have to download things like fix your crap because every other service around you, the PSN is the worst, period. Worst, the, the period, worst, period. Probably network. Nintendo. Nintendo, Nintendo does have online. But Nintendo things. doesn't, like, I have, like, Nintendo's Nintendo so is amazing. like fertilizer compared but to the plants that are actually growing. I'm just saying, <laughs> when we're going to talk about the big ones nintendo is technically still in this race yeah so okay let's talk about the plants let's not talk about the dirt like i said <laughs> when the switch comes out and they have they're basically building this thing from the ground up and in dna then it's the worst then we can talk then about it's it. like a weed we're like man just go home <laughs> like god anyways uh, speaking of nintendo uh i haven't gone I oh, yeah, I was asking what well, you asked. Oh, I thought you said, what's your award <laughs> i'm like yes. I, thought, oh, I thought you said the next award sorry uh speaking of nintendo uh, this was the same thing where I kind of ran through everything. Like, I don't think I have one. It was Division. No, no longer the Division. Um, Man, you, were, you were hoping a lot on the Division. I, uh, the Division actually... <laughs> Fuck the Division. The Division was actually nominated in like a lot of my categories because I just I loved it so much. Best story, best game, game. worst game. <laughs> like, it, it, it like was... Arkham Knight. It, it was the, Ar- yeah, it was your Arkham, or your Arkham Knight. Uh, Pokemon Go. Ooh. Pokemon that's Go. That's a take. Pokemon Go. No, sh- b- 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 my, my time. Your time is later. My time is now. This year? <laughs> <laughs> um, Pokemon Go is... Uh, everyone knows about Pokemon Go. Your grandmother knows about Pokemon Go. It was a great zeitgeist of a thing that Took went over. beyond you know, just gaming. It was a phenomenon. Uh, just like the original game was. And it was a nice thing to see. But it's really weird how far it even got in the zeitgeist for what s- doesn't make Pokemon great. The thing that makes Pokemon great is it's some of its elements, the catching, battling, uh, traveling now and then for the weird people breeding, uh, and then all the other things as well, too. Oh, yeah, there are hardcore people who are just straight up shove a ditto and another Pokemon until they get an adamant Piplup. I know. I told you about this yeah. last time. Oh, yeah. I, I, the, found, the I, video? I found an old podcast. Oh, right. Just, oh it was... um. It was. I was watching the Pokemon Let's Watch, the Pokemon movie Let's Watch, and I told you about what Ditto does, and yeah. you were like, "Wouldn't Ditto be like the best Pokemon?" I was like, "No, Ditto's awful in battle. The only reason people He's use Ditto machine. is as like a sex slave." Mm-hmm. And you were just like, well, "I don't know what the fuck you're talking." You thought it was like crazy that I was saying that. It's I still like, think it's crazy that people are out here whoring out Ditto's left and right. Yeah. Since gold and silver, that's all it is. You so, just leave a Ditto whenever Pokemon you want, and you're like, "All right, man, you just do it and come back." Hey, there's an egg. I'm gonna walk around with this egg, and it hatches, and you're like, "You're not adamant, or you don't have the stats that I want." <laughs> Chuck yeah. it into the box. That shit's stupid. Breeding um, is weird, but like, it's the sum of all the elements that makes Pokemon great: the story, the you know, the battling, the gameplay system, and everything like that. And Pokemon Go was just flick. And catch, but you still wanted to do the main thing that was in the 151 of, and still now catch the ball. It's impo- almost impossible now, uh, unless you're going across the world. Well, I mean, in terms of the original game, yeah, and that was one of the weird things that you could talk about. That's kind of bad, but I'm talking about uh, if it actually had time to bake. Like there was, there is a pseudo battle system in there with the gyms. It just really wasn't a thing. All you did was, tap. as Nick was doing right there, I, we need visuals. You're just tapping. You're just tapping all the time, maybe flicking, but like nobody flicked to dodge because it, it, the net code wasn't good. No. And that's another thing is they slowly released over the world, but like when it came out, you know, the radar to see where your Pokemon was okay, but it wasn't great. And like, I want to know where my Pokemon is. And their servers were built up to take the load of finding certain things or doing certain events. And it crashed all the time because there was so many people inundating and it could be a whole preparation thing. But think about if they had about even six more months to bake it, to do whatever they wanted with it. That would change society. 
I mean, it would probably we live, be living in a Pokemon Go society. They would get more money. Like the revenue, I guarantee their revenue probably would have if they if they held on for six more months. I don't have any numbers to back this, but I would say you know their revenue probably would have doubled. They probably would have got more retention. They probably would have got more whales, as the mobile community calls it, or the people buying more stuff, uh, which actually then just circles around back into you know whales or revenue. But like, imagine if that actually got more you know love. That would it maybe would be a proper Pokemon on the go that we well if it had had staying power for yeah like that. yeah it you know it's classic Nintendo not realizing what they have well that wasn't even Nintendo no, that, was, that was Niantic it was just by itself because it, here's the thing like, Nintendo, Nintendo, doesn't Nintendo own, had to have had Nintendo own doesn't own the Pokemon company the yeah, Pokemon company is working with Niantic and Niantic said like ah oh, like wouldn't you want to release it and Pokemon's like if or Pokemon company said go do it then I'll just say thing. the Pokemon company instead of Nintendo they. Definitely didn't realize what they had or what their potential was. Oh, neither. Just like did. Nintendo's call sign. If you talk to any interview with, between um, Nia- like the uh, who was it, the owner of Niantic did a Comic Con panel, and that's when he released some of the some of the new things that were coming up. And they were small, but everyone's like, "Oh my God!" There's we can see the gym leaders now, <laughs> or the team leaders now. This is crazy. And like, yeah, we're gonna update the radar system, but like that's that's the biggest stupidest thing. Like, you show the three people, and everyone was just yurking their jerks, like, oh my god, the Team Valor team leader, like, he's so bay, and everything. But, like, I'm sitting here, like, okay, cool. Why don't you change your servers? Why don't you update it so that way, like, your radar system actually shows where the Pokemon is? Like, or why can't it so that way I can actually, you know, ride a bike and not have the thing tell me that I'm a stupid idiot for going over 10 miles an hour riding my bike? I mean, I would also like to add that it wasn't, it almost seemed like it wasn't even aimed at people who played Pokemon. Like, it was aimed at people who might have played, like, Red and Blue when they were kids and then kind of grew up and became adults who jog and shit. Nostalgia. Um, so, because it had, like you said, also, it, it had almost it, nothing to do with the regular Pokemon. Is there any game that attempted to do that scale? Like, with Google um, Maps and all that? Niantic made a game, I forget, it's, they partnered, they actually, Niantic used to be part of Google. And they used the Google Map data to make a game that is pretty much nearly, if you overlay them together, and actually this is true, most of the Pokestops are actually stations in that game. The game is, it's basically like there was invaders and you had teams. You can't and, remember what it's called either, can you? I can't, but you I'm know drawing, what I'm talking I'm about. i blank, yeah. It was a different game. Yeah, um, but it's, it literally took all that data that they had from the old game and just put a Pokemon skin on it and put some more, you know, meat, meat into it. And it flew off, but I, that's my biggest what if of oh, this damn, year, would that be an out of nowhere. It would. Well, it would be. I mean, that's yeah, also. I, I, I literally to, changed. To to be fair, it was on my list of out of nowhere moments of just how great. Like people I'm going were running outside. around the streets. Yeah, or they did pick- videos of people like there's a Vaporeon in Central Park, and everyone's just freaking cutting the air running down the park. If they uh, they actually one thing I'll, I'll say positive for them is that they picked the summer to release it, especially. Because imagine if they were just like, let's delay it, and then December, I know we'll run up in these streets looking for Pokemon. That was a great summer game, just like, let me just go out with like eight of my best friends and hunt some Pokemon in yeah, some random that, spots. That's what I did. Like eight. four or five people just kind of running around. Eight. You can say eight best friends. Eight. What are you talking about? <laughs> so that's my biggest what if. My biggest what if, my more time in the oven. Fair enough. Um, worst game of the year. Right. That's the next te- next category is worst game. Or the uh, thumb in the booty hole, <laughs> or the unexpected. Ain't no, ain't no wants that. <laughs> unexpected thumb in the booty hole award. Uh, Carlos, do you have experience with an unexpected thumb in the booty hole? No, I put my thumb unexpectedly into other people's booty holes. So. <laughs> You're the you worst. are the worst. Speaking of the worst, Carlos, go. All um, right, we're at the top of the batting order. Mine is Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Ooh. Because, see, here, I, they, I was really up in the air between if that was going to be more, more time in the oven or if Mafia 3 was going to be. But then, like, Mafia 3, I'm like, at least they're trying to do something special. So, I'm like, they just need more time to actually solidify it. Mirror's Edge was like, I enjoy Mirror's Edge 1. Mirror's Edge Catalyst, to me, was a just, it fixed nothing. It improved nothing. It was just a giant step to, like, the side. So, it was just literally, like... Who wanted this? Who wanted open world? Like, to, to be fair, I wanted that from Mirror's Edge, and I know exactly where you're coming from. It was, it, it, it's very disappointing. It was, oh, God. I I played through the entirety of that game, and the entire time I was just like, this is just not good. This is many things, but good it is not. Mm-hmm. That's how I felt about the original Mirror's Edge. <laughs> but, like, I, I'm generally, I'll put, 
I'll suffer through a game for a, re- for a pretty good story. Mm. And Mirror's Edge was one of the few games where I like I suffered through it because I was like, this game is really fun to play, but the story sucks. There's not that much, like, at a certain point, they keep on thrusting a gun on you. But they, once they told me, like, Mirror's Edge Catalyst, you can't use a gun, I'm like, yeah, I'm jacking off right now. I'm jacking off. <laughs> I love now that we have to say what we're doing. <laughs> and then to see that they still screwed it up was just like... Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, because the linear missions, the actual story missions, are still pretty fun to play. It was more traversing the open world. When it was the dullest open world I've ever played, but literally nothing happens. There's no characters to interact with. Like, you're just running. And it, it, it made me physically tired, actually, running around the open world, because I felt I was just like... Because in the, sorry, to, like, this is going to be a bit long, but the first Mirror's Edge, like, you could always understand why uh, Faith doesn't run out of breath, because, like, most of the missions you complete in, like, five minutes, and you're just sprinting through, and they'll, like, throw up an elevator or something to pa- give you pause, but, like... But as long as you have Faith, you'll be okay. Exactly. But the open world element kind of just makes it so exhausting, comes, like, this girl's running miles at a time, breakneck speeds, flipping, doing a bunch of shit, and I'm just like, doesn't she get tired? Doesn't she, like, isn't there, like, shouldn't there be a stamina bar or something? But I understand, like, runners don't get tired of some shit. But I'm like, and then the story just ends. It kind of just ends. It doesn't really, because it, it was like, we're going to sell enough for a sequel. And now I'm just like, do I even want to play a sequel? Honestly. It, I love Mirror's Edge 1. I still go back to play it. But Mirror's Edge Catalyst is so, and they didn't, art suck too. It's, Get the fuck out of here, Mirror's Edge Catalyst. The worst game of this year for Carlos. Go get a thumb up your booty hole. <laughs> so that's unexpected. Unexpe- We're just going to call this the unexpected thumb. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, I have... I need to get a judgment from the room. Can I nominate something that I have not played? It is so egregious to me. I, is normally, it no this is Sky? no. No, it's not. Oh, I played No Man's Sky. Um, no Man's Sky pretty much gets a pass for me because it is one of those things where the zeitgeist was so large it could never live up to the thing. No matter what it put out, it would never, if it was an thank early you. access game. God, thank you. Yeah, if like, it was, if they released it say on Steam on early access for twenty bucks, I think we were like, oh, this is cool. The, I'll see it when it's the done. The two the two biggest people at fault are a Sony for putting a twenty dollar game at sixty dollars. And trying to hype it up as it was going to be a triple A title. It was not. It never was going to be. Nope. And then the other people at fault are anyone who was trying to hype that game up. Like, person who was part of the, oh, you can do this, and you can do this, and you can do this, and it's going to be amazing. It's going to be literally the game where you can do anything you've ever wanted to in your entire mm-hmm. life. I'm like, fuck you, you're an idiot. Like, look at any game trailer. Every single one of those trailers looked the exact same. I knew what that game was. My brother bought that game because he got caught up in the hype. He wasn't like, oh, this is the worst game I've ever played. He just kind of like, oh, I don't like this game, whatever. Mm-hmm. So I borrowed it so from him. So really like that game. No, yeah, so I borrowed it from him, and I was like, yep, this is exactly what I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. The, basically, the space ex- exploration part from Spore. That's basically yeah, all it was. No, it, and I went into it thinking that's all it was going to be. But, Nick, didn't you see in this show? Who the fuck cares? <laughs> like, just watch the gameplay. Well, it's been the same for three years. And the biggest, the, the, the fault also lies on um, Hello Games because they... They never said no. They never that said, was the thing. They never, never saying they no. never cut anything down. They never said no. They said, we're going to try to make this thing. They to always want to live up to everyone's expectations. But to be fair, the, they're, but, they're an indie developer. Like, they, but they there's a, to even if you're them. an indie developer, you can sit there and I don't, go, I don't fault no. them. I don't fault them for that because it's it's hard to stand up to a crowd like that. Like, Especially I, so, one so ravenous. If I tell yeah. you to murder a person and yeah. then you shoot them and say, well, I couldn't say no. <laughs> All right, we're not doing the Nazi analogy. <laughs> it's like, not a Nazi analogy. Well, it's literally, literally, you have to put people's expectations in check. Fine. But, I mean, we've also lived through Peter Molyneux. So, like, we've seen... Oh, no. Like, real, I, I never trusted do anything. Okay. What, what, okay. Peter, I want to address this. Peter Molyneux was a... He's... A garbage truck on fire. He <laughs> comes down the street. He'll take your garbage. And you're just like, man, that is the worst truck in the entire world. But you want to see it because it's just on fire rolling down the street throwing your garbage in there. And it does a service for you too because still he puts out the service for you in the things of Goddess, the Curiosity Cube, Milo, which actually never came out. But that's, Milo was when I said, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> I'm literally just talking about Fable. 
And how about before every fable, he was, he was the same way. He's like, you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. Oh, we, didn't, we weren't able to develop that. And yeah. then it's like, yes, this is how developers work sometimes. They get really passionate about their projects. Other people pick up on it, and then things just get out of control. See, it's... Uh, no Man's Sky isn't even your award, so just like... Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> we got so... It was like a normal podcast. Um, so can I nominate something no. that I have not played? You can talk about it, but it okay. can't be your nomination. So it's not going to be my winner. So it's my winner on the website, on my on my website, because it's so egregious. Uh, it's Super Mario Maker 3DS. Is that the one you haven't played? That's the one that I would like That's I like to win. I have not played it. I have seen it. I have read it. I've watched people play it. I know what they've taken out of that game, and it's like talent. It's like I, I can't give you an analogy for it, but let me tell you this. Super Mario Maker. That's Hold on. This is the second time you can't give an analogy. You better bump your analogy. <laughs> Super Mario Maker uh, was a great game. I think I nominated uh, one something back. I think it actually no, I don't. I f- forgot to go back to see what my game of the year last year was. I don't think it was Undertale. Super Mario Maker. It, yeah, it, you're right. It was. And I was. I think I was going between that and Super Mario Maker. Um, Super Mario Maker was a great game. It, it had all this wonderful building tools. Uh, you could share with your friends. You could play all these games online. I would argue it is still a good game. Hmm? I mean, it's still got a fairly decent Oh, no. It, it's not, it was. It is. It is still yeah. a great game. Uh, the 3DS version is everything that it is not. What, and basically, if I gave you the, the Super Mario Maker and said, oh, by the way, you, uh, you can't share the levels that you create. Oh, by the way, uh, you can't actually uh, play a game that you want to play. We're just going to take ga- like games from the Wii U at random and chuck them at you. Some of the features are going to be taken out of them, though, because we won't support everything for you. Uh, you want to play some of these levels? Shout okay. out to Nintendo. It, it, like, basically, they stripped everything that made that game fun of creating a level, putting it online, or sharing it with your friends. You can't even share a level. Like, I can't be... Carlos can't have a 3DS. I can't have a 3DS. And go, Carlos, I want you to play my level. And goes, cool, Carlos. And Carlos goes, how do I play that? Good question. Do you have a street pass on? Street pass. I need to have Carlos street pass my level in order for him to play it. And that's not even a guarantee. Otherwise, I, at this point, I hate friend codes. I yeah. hate codes. Friend, friend codes is something that should have been done away with 10 years not ago. Not even, well, yeah, friend codes, I, they're not actually called friend codes in there. They're just called course IDs. It doesn't matter. I hate them. It's they're, ridiculous. They're terrible. 12 digits? It's something like that. Like, um, just, it's not hard to make an online service, like... Fucking Xbox Live did it what like two thousand? Yeah, but you know it's Nintendo. We we, we were talking about that earlier. Oh my God. I can't even give I can't even give you an annoying twelve digit code to say Carlos, please play my game. And you'd be like, I would be glad to, but you really shouldn't because my levels are crap. That's it. I, Everything that I read I about this, it. it's the worst game that you could have possibly put out. It's not even like if they get said, hey, pay. Oh, by the way, twenty bucks. Or excuse me, thirty bucks. Like twenty stay, is fine. Yeah, thirty bucks. It is a full fledged uh, release on the three DS. It sounds like a piece of shit. Sounds like Nintendo. So what's your winner? So that would be my winner, but I have not played it. So if it is, if we actually have to play something, it'd be Battleborn. Battleborn. Ooh. Oh yeah, you play Battleborn. Is whoo not Overwatch. There's someone on my friends. There's someone on my friends list, and I think it's a subscriber, which is why I shouldn't bring this up, but I'm going to anyway. Uh, who keeps playing Battleborn, and it keeps showing up in like the PlayStation feed, mm-hmm. and every time I see it, I'm just like, why the fuck are they playing Battleborn? Like. What are they doing with their life? It's, it's um, either, maybe they work there. It's either Battleborn. <laughs> maybe they work for Gearbox. It's either Battleborn or Paragon or something. Which one's the Gearbox? Paragon again. Paragon's Paragon are, is actually pretty good. Which one's, like, which one's the Gearbox? By, by, it's uh, Battleborn. Okay, yeah, then it's Battleborn. Because I remember thinking, like, come on. Maybe they work there. I'm maybe, it. yeah. <laughs> um, Battleborn is. I was actually gifted a copy. Otherwise, I probably. I played the betas and I was gifted a copy of the game. I probably played it for two hours and I was not even that because I was playing with that set friend uh, and after a while he even gave it up as well too uh, it will win the award for the worst HUD of the decade it is the most unrecognizable like I'm trying to find my health and I'm looking at every I, sorry I did a visual thing I looked at every single corner of the screen like which one of these is my health okay that's my ammo and then things are just popping up like you know you've you ever seen um Oh, like those pictures of all those pop-ups on your screen. That's probably, you have like the purple monkey, the clippy thing saying like, uh, it looks like you're trying to like kill a bunch of enemies. Would you like some help with that? Would you like to buy $5 of credits? I think you mean the bonsai, the help. Yeah, the helper monkey. monkey. Yes. Yeah. Like the HUD is just weird. The gameplay doesn't flow very well, either online. The single player mode is, the co-op mode is just garbage. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, you should be. 
How dare you have a most, social life? That was the most like <laughs> you're laid back as relaxed as oh, possible, sorry, I got and you just pull up. <laughs> you Classic pull up your phone, Carlos. Almost blo- you block your you're blocking Spencer's face with your phone, just kind of going. Like you could not be less interested in me. <laughs> to to be fair, that. I'm talking about Battleborn. I'm, I'm still like, what? That is <laughs> so rude. <laughs> <laughs> to take a picture. Oh my god. No, that should have been the thumbnail. <laughs> so it's just you. We are back like. No, no, no. Spencer's face was <laughs> shocked. And people. People playing Battleborn? What? <sighs> Anyways, it, it's not like. It, someone someone said that people at Gearbox had leftover sketches they'd just been working on. Like, why don't we do this whole Overwatch thing? To, now, here's and the thing. And then just didn't know how to make Overwatch. They were trying to do something like Borderlands took the shooter genre and the loot grab when wasn't or the um, what's it called? That's a specific term for when you pick up random loot, cry, loot grind, loot dungeon, loot whatever. Diablo loot type stuff, shit. Diablo type stuff, and they they made it work. They made a baby, and it was it was great. Uh, and they tried to do the same thing with this while taking MOBA and the third person shooter, and it, it just it doesn't blend. It's, it doesn't blend very well. There's like there's sometimes like okay things are getting chaotic, but that's all user generated stuff. It's not like the game's natural flow. And I don't like people comparing Battleborn to Overwatch because they're technically no, no, two I, totally I, different I genres. Didn't to, I didn't mean to make that comparison. I just meant like someone said it was just a very lazy game that they. Designed. It seems like to me a lot of people. Weekend. It's like you said. There's a lot of sketches that they didn't put into Borderlands. And like, oh, we're gonna put this vampire in Borderlands. Ah, you can't put a bat, like vampire. And they're trying to think of a new game, and they had all these sketches. And like, wait, where's Barry's vampire? Like, go get Barry. And, bring it. and they put all of them up in the lumber. I was like, MOBA. I think I think I saw somewhere where someone was asking, or it was just like, so you guys working on Borderlands three? And they're like, no, you guys should just check out Battleborn. I'm like, yeah, we don't want Bar- we don't want Battleborn. No, it's it's not it's not that great. And like, it's it, it, the worst thing about it is. Is it, it seems like something that you would trust Gearbox. I like I trust Gearbox a I lot. I do not trust Gearbox. I mean, the they aliens, throw Colonial Marines thing, Duke Nukem. Like, there's they, not they have that produced. Was forever. I no. They well, here's the thing: nothing when they do something Orleans. original, like right now, Randy Pitchford, who's the owner of Gearbox, just He's a dickhead. He, yerks his jerk over old things, and like Duke Nukem, like he they put Duke Nukem into. Um, I thought that when uh, it was PlayStation Awards when they were showing things oh, for um, yeah. Bulletstorm. Bulletstorm. I like Bulletstorm. Well, I think Bulletstorm was great. And I'm like, are they making a new Bulletstorm? And I was like, oh no, it's just a remastered version of it. And we're but putting Duke, Duke Nukem. Nukem in. To be fair, Duke Nukem kind of fits that game. It's just like really. But you don't have to. Put no, no, no. Duke but it's, Nukem in the, it, the game is based on like really exaggerated tropes and stuff like that. Like yeah, the whole point is like make a new one. But for Duke Nukem, it makes sense because he's an exaggerated trope that does not belong. But in you, any it's game. almost like you're bringing the dead horse out and be like, no, look, it's, guys, it's, it's all, he it's, fits in this universe. No, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost more like when they try to take parody and forget they're doing parody and make it real. I, I, I just, I don't really get what Randy Pitchford likes about Duke Nukem. He's, he's, he's a object, uh, yeah, object of his time. So he picks up the shit. And the nice award. Oh my god, why am I doing oh, am this? am I not answering this award? Didn't you say? No. Oh, Jack 2. No, but... <laughs> the very first award we did? <laughs> yes. Yeah, Jack 2, very timely, came out this year. Um, In your mind. To be fair, this isn't much better. Uh, my worst game of this year is pretty short. Um, Ape Escape 2 for PS4. So, Kappa. I didn't know that. I love Ape Escape 2. I really do. First of all, bought the game thinking I'll get to play it again and really cool visuals. That'll be nice. Might even get a platinum trophy out of it. First of all, there's no platinum, which is ridiculous. That's a heartbreaker. Um, second of all, there is a EU version of Ape Escape, which I didn't know because I don't know why they would ever bother making it different for the the EU as opposed to because England Americans. had to leave it. No, so like all the voices are different and the a whole, timely joke. Yeah, all the voices are different and stuff. Like the original voice, like the main character was voiced by the dude who voiced was voiced by the woman who did Ash Ketchum, and like your assistant is voiced by the person who did Misty, and the professor in it is voiced by Dan Green, also known as Yami Yugi. And it was just, like, such a, like, nostalgic voice cast for, like, that time in my life. The EU version is all, like, weird British people I've never heard in my life. Who and are these people with these accents? And I, I literally realized, like, no Platinum Trophy. Like, the controls in this game are intentionally, like, really bad because it came out at, like, a weird time. And it's all the voices are different and stuff like that. And the gameplay is slightly different. I'm just like, this is awful. Like, I don't know why. This is just, like, the worst thing I've played all year. It's like, I couldn't even get through the first level. It's just like, I hate this. I hate so much of this. 
I really shouldn't hate this, but I do. And um, that's it. I like. I don't have. Um, I can't think of another game I played where it's like I, this is hot garbage that came out this year. Other than that, so I'm just like, there we go. Just short, sweet, to the point. Yeah, there you go. That's what we need more of. Ape Escape Two. Don't do it. Um, not even once. Not even once. Best gameplay. Uh, Spencer, your turn. Ah, oh, fuck it. <laughs> I thought we were going to do, do, we want do to, other ones. Do, should I start off? No, because actually I'm going to get this out. So there's three. This and also Game of the Year for me. Uh, I told them I was going to shoot from the hip because there's three of them. There's Overwatch, Inside, and Doom. All of them on, if it was a triangle, they'd all be on each different corner for me. Because Doom is a great first-person shooter. Uh, Overwatch is a great team shooter. And Inside is just... Inside. it. It's it's not actually it kind of maybe I don't know I wouldn't really want inside to be inside of me because it's gray and depressing and kind of really weird and has some weird mechanics in it so that are really good. good. Um, honestly, if I'm gonna give it to gameplay, um, I'll probably give it to inside because the gameplay, the platforming is actually really great, and then. Oh, can we preference spoilers now? No, don't spoil this game. Oh, it's... <laughs> what? <laughs> what? No. What are you doing in the game of the year, you selfish prick? <laughs> nah, no spoils. I played Uncharted 4, so we can spoil Uncharted okay, 4. Okay, spoil it inside. Okay. Uh, Probably never get to When it. you become the big blob mess? Yeah, <laughs> when you become the big blob mess, it's, even though it's the like final 5% of the game, the way that thing handles and the puzzles that it makes you do with that mess... With that hot, like, nutsack looking with arms and legs mess. It's amazing. It's like the best five, last 5% five of any game I've probably played in the last decade. Which is, that's saying a lot. It came out of nowhere for me. It doesn't win a mess thing out of nowhere. It came, it was nominated for it under my thing. It comes absolutely out of nowhere. It controls like a nutsack with arms and legs, with a bunch of them. And there's a lot of just technology and a lot of just, it's amazing. It's like you, when you, and you see it and you go, there's no way, how did you even program this? How did you even do this? I don't even care. Cause it just, it naturally flows. Like you, there's a big giant blob, you jump in a platform. Like, like, oh, I wonder if I can get up to that thing. You jump, yep. All the arms pick you up and pick you a thing. And you have to jump to another thing. You gotta take this box over to here, light it on fire. It's burning you. You don't care. You're a giant, you have a bunch of arms. You'll grow some arms back throw it into this puzzle. And now just, I have to play this because I'm trying oh, so hard to visualize it. The worst thing is is that if you were going to... I was actually on the fence because I have to say it because that's like... The puzzles are great. Some of them are obvious. Some of them aren't so obvious in like a good way. Uh, there's a whole bunch of hidden stuff that you can do. Uh, I, I don't actually don't even want to say any more about it because if you like puzzle platformers, it's the best game for you. Uh, if we had an artistic category, it would win hands down. It's got some of the best style, some of the best rendered, not rendered like in terms of being pretty, it just presents itself in such a way you sit there and go, a small little team of a couple of people made this and you, it's the same thing we were talking about earlier, um, where, uh, I forget who we were talking about now, my brain's just kicking out. Never mind. Uh, <laughs> Nick was just gazing at me like, man, I can't help you here. I have no I idea have, what you're I talking about. I have no about. lifeline for you. I don't know what you're talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, so I'll probably, I'll, I'll give it inside with a, Overwatch just has a great team mechanic. Um, the shooting feels really good for a first right. person. We just shooter. talked about inside. Why are you talking about Overwatch? I was just saying, like for the other two, three that I had, and then Doom's a fucking Doom. But I'll, I'll yerk that later. Oh, um, I predicted. <laughs> oh. I predicted before we came here that Spencer would give awards to indie garbage, and I'm glad I was not let down. Nope. Um, so my best gameplay, uh, I'm very happy to give it to this is Deus Ex: Mankind Divided. Uh, I had so much fun with that game with the weird August release. Um, it's a great time to release. It is a fantastic time. And I wish more games would navigate. Just release something in the summer. We just moved towards the summer. Yeah. Um, I had so much fun with it. Oh, excuse me. Um, Nick almost died. I, <laughs> it, um, I need some augments. The fact that they relevant joke. they took everything I liked about the first game and just improved on it, and um, like the ability to do multiple different ways for every mission, the different powers they added, the different abilities and stuff like that. I can't remember like that was the first time in a long time where I was like, "Wow, the sequel literally has just done everything better," um, and I was so happy for it. My only downside, and the reason it's not going to be getting game of the year, 
is because it definitely feels like a game that was like cut in half and they were just like let's just release another game separately and uh, I got beef with that kind of business practice because the ending was not very strong uh, even the ending fight though was was amazing because it's like the first it's like the only boss um, and they actually let you take it down um, with non-lethal or stealth and even doing that is really fun and they have super lethal uh, yeah and they have super lethal um or, uh, and this isn't a spoiler, you can find, earlier in the level, you can find a kill switch for that boss. And it, it's, like, really hidden. Like, it's under a desk behind two packages. And, <laughs> yeah, I know. It's amazing. And um, if you, and it's, like, halfway, like, a, a long way back, too. Mm. And you can, um, you can go, you can get that. And then at the start of the battle, like, you'll have options to either, like, you can either fight him normally or you can just be like kill switch and bam. He'll just explode. And it's like that's the end. That's you beat it. You beat the game. Jedi mind trick. That's I just, over. That I, very dangerous. I just like love OG having the ability for that. Um so it's amazing. And I purposely like instead of going for the platinum immediately, uh, oh, it's just not just that, like the breach mode, which is like the not online play, but like a bunch of small little challenge maps. I even had fun with that. It was just like little bursts of Deus Ex. This is the only person I know who actually enjoyed it. Uh to be, I mean, there's some. I have some some beef with it, but I mean, overall, I was like, it's just extra content. I like it. Um, so I purposely have not gone back to it since I beat it twice. First um, with a no kill, second with a no alarm run. Yeah, I play like that. Um, and because I'm waiting until all the DLC is released, I'm gonna go back and like run through all the DLC and stuff too. So. Um, yeah, that is easily my best gameplay. It wasn't the running for game of the year, but had a couple faults. All right, this is my turn. My Arkham turn Knight. <laughs> Metal Gear Solid Five. <laughs> <laughs> best gameplay. Uh, this this game stuck up on me. Uh, me and Nick were talking about this. Uh, Titanfall Two. This had no business being as good as it was. It legitimately had <laughs> yep. no business. Cause, like, I haven't played a first person shooter. I think since like. Bioshock Infinite. Mm. I haven't enjoyed a first-person shooter since, like, Call of Duty 4. Yeah. And so... Modern Warfare 2, but yeah. I, I'm just saying... I'm just For me, personally. Yeah. Timefall 2... It's such, like, a... That was a campaign... This, okay, terrible story. But pure <laughs> gameplay-wise... Garbage FPS multiplayer story. It, but the gameplay was great. It was like snorting cocaine and shooting an AK-47 throughout the entire campaign. <laughs> like... <laughs> It never let up. It was just like, all right, you want to fuck some shit up? Here's the game to just fuck some shit up. And then, I know you're going to talk about it at one point. I, I don't think I am. I changed my mind. Okay, so there's a great level. Have you played Titanfall? It, we're on a game with your podcast. We're matter. spoiling it up. Okay, yeah. halfway through the game, I'm just like, all right, this is enjoyable. You get to this, like, abandoned facility. Yeah, and then they introduce, like, a uh, time travel mechanic. Which, first of all, as soon as I saw it's like that we were start because it starts off where you're like running through the level and like involuntarily you're having you run like, through a couple time skips. And my first reaction was like, I don't know about this. I thought this was gonna go full stupid Bioshock with yeah. it and like we can see the ghost because you're the chosen one. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw I the, love that trope. <laughs> I saw the time travel mechanic and I was kind of like, this is pretty. I don't know. I don't like stuff like this. I thought it was gonna like, get really I feel like, stupid. Yeah, I feel like really that's fun. usually where shit gets off the rails. Uh, so you you find the you're like command like uh your superior I forget exactly what it so was. for the for the most part of that game at that point you were going to meet up with a company like a different group and so, unsurprisingly every time you go to meet someone that everyone person died. dies yeah <laughs> you so never get to meet with them. you finally get to him and then like he was doing like some secret covert mission and like the entire base is you find him sticking out of a ceiling yeah. And you have to grab, like, some, like, package from his hand in classic, like, FPS way. It's like, oh, well, he died in this perfect way to hand you this. <laughs> so then you go through a little bit more of the level, and then you find his bottom half, which I didn't... You don't even realize up until that point that he wasn't... I thought he just, like, a stuck through his ceiling. Apparently, like, he was just... His top half was stuck in the ceiling. You find his bottom half, like, what, a mile away? Yeah. Something like that. And um, on it, you find um, this, like, thing, this, like, little glove. And you put on the glove, suddenly these time travel things that you've been seeing, you now control on the fly. So, like, you, you'll you be fighting an enemy, and you'll travel into the... Well, technically it was the past. So there are enemies in the past, and you could just travel back to the present. To get get your health back up, and then hop back into the fight. 
And then you can also, like, if you remember where they're coming in from, you can potentially run behind them and just travel back and get on them. I basically treated it like I was Nightcrawler, where I was just, like, I was hopping in, hopping out, meleeing them, popping in, hopping out. And it was some of the most unexpected fun I was I could have had in that game. Also, and then, like, even the next level after that, it was just, like, it made a good Mirror's Edge level. Because, like... At, the pilots can like run on walls, but for, like the next level, you're doing like intense, high, uh, really quick platforming with shooting and whatnot. I was like, this is what Mirror's Edge should have been. Granted, take out the guns. I was like, let respawn now, make Mirror's Edge. But Titanfall 2, my I just, I just want respawn to make every game for <laughs> my honorable mention was Ratchet and Clank because I played that game four times in a row, back to back to back to back. I, I played it three times in a row for the Platinum. Did you go for the Platinum? Yeah, I got the Platinum. That's yeah. why I had to go back four times. And I, it, that was... I played it three times in a row. It should have only been two. That fucking Grubachon trophy. That but, was um, the stupidest bullshit. But anyway. But it got to play the game. Yeah, yeah it was a And lot of I honestly, like replaying it, I, I was just like, nope, still good. Now I need another Ratchet and Clank. Yeah, so I, want a, I want a sequel to the remake. <laughs> <laughs> or a continuation from the PS3 series. I'll I, take either. I think it did well. I think so. Because yeah. it, it came out at a good time. There's nothing else. The movie around. did bad, poorly. Yeah. It's on Netflix this month. Oh, I'm about to watch it. We can well, watch they, it. Yeah. Apparently, it's really right. bad, too. We'll see. With Sylvester. Yeah, they spent a lot of money on that. They did. There was a lot of. Sylvester Stallone, Paul Giamatti, Rosario Dawson. She was in the game. Apparently, the movie pick, uh, fills in some holes. Because in the, in the game, they do, the story doesn't really tell you a lot of stuff, but the movie apparently plays that anyway. up. It's whatever. So, that was your. Uh, Best your, gameplay Titanfall 2. Cool. Uh, next category is uh, also multiplayer. It's a lot of fun. That's true. We've been playing multiplayer. The first, though, Titanfall. I play a lot of Titanfall. Titanfall 1. One was a beta. Let's just get it out of the way. It was a beta for what Titanfall Two was eventually going to blossom into. And I feel bad for Respawn because they're, they're under the thumb. That yeah. game got sent out to die, essentially between Infinity Titan, Titanfall One, Two. I mean, what do you mean got sent out? Oh, it right. came out right after. It yeah. came out right after Battlefield One That's, and just before. That is one hundred percent EA being stupid. Where it's like, oh, they're two completely different games, yeah. and they thought they could eat Infinity Ward's lunch. No. Um, no. I think Infinity Warfare, excuse me. I either. think it'll have I'm hoping it has enough of a slow burn where it'll just like recoup itself, mm-hmm. especially since it like, keeps going on sale. And free DLC. Um the free mm-hmm. DLC too. I I'm hoping it earns enough goodwill where they still make Titanfall three. Yeah. If I we go think, for I think they'll do it. If we go for stupidest moments if we had a category, I, that would have been my winner. Yeah, EA can I don't think we'll talk yeah. that EA, future level but. EA cannibalizing itself. But anyway. Um, or they'll try and make a whole game about it. <laughs> Inside uh what? A Deus Ex. Deus Ex. Okay, I was just making sure everyone won. Yeah. So, um, next one is Best Story, and I'm supposed to go first, but... Um, so, I wrote Final Fantasy XV. I don't think it was the best story this year. I just... This is the only story game I played this year. I just can't remember what other story game I've played. Stardew Valley? Stardew Valley's story is not that great. It's not really a story. Um, but, yeah, I think of the games I played, it had the best story. Um, it's hits a lot of notes right it hits it's definitely a vast improvement on 13 but i mean even like pissing in a jar is an improvement on the pile of shit that is 13 talking about batman versus superman (laughs) (laughs) so um yeah it's i think it's a a vast improvement i'm not going to spoil it because carlos is playing through it now and uh, spencer has a sealed copy on his nightstand yeah can we actually say this here's the thing i don't like about best story is People talking like you have to talk about the story. I know you get it. Like this is a game where we don't spoilers and everything. Uh, but don't ruins, try to spoil the story. I'm not going to. No, say. I'm not spoiling it for anyone. Who's Go like, out and play it. the things that we're. I'm, I'm not if for a game category best story. It would be stupid to spoil said story. Yeah. Um, yeah which it was all a dream. Yeah. <laughs> I, I especially you like, were actually the killer the whole time. I especially like the ending where it was in a snow globe at the end. Um, but no, it was it was a good experience from start to finish. Um, I know some people are taking beef with it, but to be honest, I my expectations were pretty high for fifteen, and it met them. <laughs> like it was it met my expectations pretty well. It had the typical like weird weird Final Fantasy story, but being a Final Fantasy fan, that's fine for me. Yeah, uh, I got to decorate my car look, looking like a cactar, so that's fine. Um, that's all I really needed in the story. I hate that there's no true black for the car. There is. Is. Yep. Oh, you have to go out of hell out of your way, right? No, really. It's good to find uh, it. I just keep going in purple. I don't want purple. I ain't trying to make this. Isn't the car in the beginning black? Yeah, for quickly, and then it changes the. Re- no. The- oh, mine is purple. Because you white. used the platinum le- Leviathan, which is purple. Oh, damn. Shoot. 
<laughs> well, I, I treat it as a tribute to Prince every time I get in there. Fine. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, without spoiling, uh, I think people should give Final Fantasy Fifteen a chance. There was some there was some stuff where they were looking to update it, where a particular section of the game they said drew on a little long, and uh, they were going to try and shorten it or like fix it. To be honest, I played it and I was just kind of like, it may not be my favorite part of the game, but I know why they did it. So I was just like, you know, I accepted it and I was just like, okay. Uh, so, you know, uh, I really, really enjoyed it. It's difficult to not spoil. But, um, it, yeah. No, it, we're, we're saying here, had listen, a, where you nominate these things, go play them. Yeah. I had, um, I guess I'll say this the side quests were kind of dumb, um, except for a few, but, uh, and the, Minor characters never really did it for me, but the main characters I really did grow to like. Except Roman Reigns, ex- Carlton Banks, <laughs> um, except for uh, Prompto. No, I'm kidding. Um, I did like them, and I liked um, the villain. I thought was a very strong villain. So uh, very had that thing of like um, you know kind of being not mysterious but like confusing, is that you didn't really understand their motivations, which I think makes a good villain. Until like until it comes to a head and you know what they were doing the whole time, so I like that. Um, yeah, Spencer's next. No, he's not. It's you. All right. Well, my best story of the year was Firewatch. I actually uh, downloaded that. Um, it's downloading right now. I thought it was a wonderful, poignant tale. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything. How long is it? You beat that a couple of yeah, a couple hours. A couple of hours. I mean, like a few couple of hours. Like it was, it was nominated. I nominated it, but so all I know about Firewatch is fire, the name Firewatch. So are you basically just staring at a what fireplace? Is, that was actually the funny, it, the funniest thing about Firewatch is nobody fucking knew what Firewatch was about. I mean, I knew, it was I, it, I, it pulled the reverse <laughs> No Man's Sky, where we had no <laughs> idea, no what information. <laughs> it was like we're making this story I mean, driven I, game. I mean, I watched, Firewatch. I watched the PlayStation events. I knew what Firewatch was basically yeah. about. Yeah, but I think no, that's it, the joke. I, know. <laughs> I think for me, it was it's something that I it's a story that's actually like really stuck with me. Like I think about it every couple months, and that's not very common. But like, no, I, no, I know what you mean. Actually, like it took impact on my personal life. Where I was just like, I need to change the way I live my life. Damn. It, it's a it's a game that's really driven by narrative and dialogue. Yeah, and the I, dialogue is very centric to the story. And I very much enjoyed the char- the characters in the game, and mm. I very like. You almost won. Yeah. <laughs> the, I enjoyed the I enjoyed the atmosphere too because I felt like because I feel like atmosphere is a, like a, a low key part of the story that people don't talk about. No, I I think it's brought up fairly often. I think we bring it up an often. Well, t- like at least to me, it felt like I was out there in the woods doing my shit, fire watching. If you would <laughs> picking up turtles, yeah. Then, would you did you pick up the turtle? Yes. Did, would you name it? Wait, wait. You picked up the turtle, and if you decided to keep the turtle, you can give it a name. Uh, oh, I didn't keep the turtle. I actually forget the name, but I was hoping I could actually... It was something like Tercestle. I forget. I have no idea. Let's continue. Sorry. But yeah, I just... Hercules? It's it, 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 like real... It was all actors' names, uh, but one of them was like something Stallone. I'm like, oh, it was really good, though. And I like, I wigged out. But it's so good! <laughs> also, like, I think I'm, like, I made my then ex- ex-girlfriend play it. She enjoyed it, too. And her sister, I made her play too. And I think it's something, I, especially for someone who doesn't play a lot of games, I feel like it's a great way into the medium as like a slow, like, okay, here's at least how to play a first person game. And now you can actually go play something. So it's not Gone Home in the Forest? No, you actually, there's stuff to do. It's, a, it's very much a Dude, walking a, sim, though. It is, yeah. yeah, it is very much a walking sim, but more gameplay. The thing that I didn't like about the game is that there's a lot of interactables that really. Don't do it. Anymore. Don't do anything. And that's what I didn't like about Gone Home. You pick up a cup and it's like, it's a cup. <laughs> uh, I was going to say the L.A. Noir uh, brush conundrum. Yes. Picking up every brush at every kind of crime scene and yeah. never does anything. Yeah, exactly. All right, so Spencer. Um, originally, I was thrown into chaos earlier. but the Overwatch. <laughs> story of the year. Story of the year. Got to deliver that hand. Also, we got to go to Antarctica for some reason. I don't know why. Tracer has a lesbian girlfriend. My God. And the internet exploded. How dare you with, make my wife Steven. not like me? Oh. My orientation, Nick. You're, you, she was the poster child. How dare you? Just change, change your gender. Yeah, I know. Who's a social construct? <laughs> Just change your gender. <laughs> now I have to push it in every single time. Um, Tuck it in. 
Same, no, no. Hey, you know, you know, on me. Anyways, um, the game, I, like I said, I was originally thrown into turmoil, but I'm like, no, no, the game that hit me the most um, is the game that I, uh, I, I picked to win. There are two things, pieces of medium, that really hit me hard. One was Bonavere's first four tracks on uh, 2 million. <laughs> oh, no, go listen. It's the yeah, worst that was, shit. It was a great album. I listened to the this, just the four. After that, it's a little weird, but the first four albums, you sit there and you feel so weighted. You're like, oh, fuck. So how's this coming back to game of the year? Uh, so the, the other thing that hit me just as hard uh, was a game called That Dragon Cancer. Oh, shit. That game's heavy. Yes. I, I didn't play it, but I know the that. It's, I've never heard of this game. It is a game made uh, by a man whose family dealt with the cancer of their child. And he basically took that story and turned it into a game. Uh, and it, it is a game. It has, the gameplay honestly is not that great, but there are- Fucking loser. Can't the dialogue, <laughs> <laughs> the dialogue and the way it's presented and the way, cause it has this very imagin imaginatory um, elements to it in terms of like, it's called that dragon cancer because they tell the story of um, basically what's she fighting off? What is the child fighting off? It's fighting off a dragon. Um, and she's brave and she's trying, I think she or he, have, I'm actually killing the gender inside my head. Um, but anyways, <laughs> but anyways, it, it's super heavy. It, it's the same thing. You can beat it in a couple, like less than a couple of hours, but you, after you're done playing it, you sit in a chair and you're like, fuck. I don't have cancer. <laughs> yeah. And or, as like, a, as I mean, everyone's had somebody in their life, at least I think that has had someone that went through cancer. I've had multiple. So, and I've seen people go through chemo. I've sat with people going through chemo. Uh, I've had friends who have beat it. I have friends who have lost to it. So even that aside, if I take all the personal stuff aside, you sit there and to walk, it's literally a walk along with this family from the beginning to, you know, to the end of the journey. And you, again, I physically sat in this chair that I'm sitting in right now after playing it and didn't say a word for 30 seconds after the game end and just went, fuck, and went upstairs and got a beer. <laughs> it, it's super heavy and it's, I think it's like 10 bucks, um, probably during the winter sale. If you're listening to this now during Steam, uh, you can probably pick it up for less. I encourage you, and that's why I said we should probably not spoil things, because if I did, it, it wouldn't have the same impact. Okay. So out of nowhere to make it happy. Yeah. So um, this is the Out of Nowhere um, Award, which is exactly what it sounds like. Best game release that beat your ex... You were this weird. I did. It's basically... A Best game that that beat your expectations. Best game or moment that beat your expectations or surprised you. Quite literally or... came out of nowhere, surprised you. Mm -hmm. Pulled no uh, one up. Pulled I don't Randy know, Orton. I don't know you're supposed to go. We'll just say Carlos. Oh, uh, yeah. I was going to go. Duck? <laughs> he was just swallowing some water. As you it said was that. either. Um, I have two. It's not either. It's You pick one. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to go with uh, Hitman because I think you're going to choose Titanfall. Uh, I was gonna say uh, Stardew Valley. Okay, well, no, you I'll... can choose the same thing. No. no. <laughs> well, all right, I'm overruled on that one. So, um, Hitman, I just think that was a. Me and Nick actually were talking yeah. about. Yeah. We played it the wrong way, and that we waited till all the episodes were done. I can't. Oh. I can't believe I'm saying this, but an episodic game like Hitman is like it's actually better episodically. There's so much content with each map. Where it's like, I've only gotten through the first two. And like, even then, I'm still working on you're the just second You're trying to get all the kills. You just Yeah, you want to like do all the challenges. They do a thing where it's like, they give you a, um, a mastery uh, thing. Where it's like, you get points for like, executing kills in different ways. Completing different challenges, like different opportunities. Like, disguise as this person and talk to the target. Then murder them. Uh, get the target sick from their, like the special drink that only you can make. Then go follow them in the bathroom and drown them in the toilet. Like, just stuff like that. Mm -hmm. like, and... The Paris level for me particularly, that took the first time I played that. That was like three to four hours. Yeah, it's just just the memorizing first... routes and trying to figure out the most fun way to kill something. And then I'm looking at the rest of the levels and I'm just like, there's so much content here. It I wish I'd rather so just bought it. Overwhelmed. Come back to it every once in a while. If you were thinking about Hitman, Hitman is well worth the sixty dollars, whatever the fuck they're charging for it. Like there's so much fucking content in that game. 
Uh, and it's just like I can't imagine like getting through the rest of the game. It's <laughs> it's giving me a uh, Fallout syndrome. Yeah, where I'm like, there's so much content here. I'm kind of afraid to come back to it. I would have actually loved if, like, say this game came out, came out in April, like episode one or something, and then just play through episode one. Hindsight like, being 2020. Yeah, and then just like, and then I'm done. I'm okay. And then you know, episode and then, comes out. A new level like, comes out, and you can be like, oh, cool, a new Hitman level came out. It's almost it. The game it's it's so big. It almost feels like as if they're releasing a sequel right after another. So it's like it feels like you're running through a series instead of like an entire like a game. That's how big it is. They these games all almost feel like big enough, like each map. There's mm-hmm. actually a great uh, video. You guess what's like Game Maker's Toolkit? It's on. He's a guy on YouTube. Nope. So he talks about. Oh, uh, he's not on Daily Motion. He's not. On, he could be on Vimeo. He's not on Vimeo. <laughs> be on Vimeo. Yeah. He talks about how uh, Hitman trains you into becoming the master assassin because like most of the game is repetition and failure but by the time you've like gotten most of the kills you've now memorized it so now you're actually the hitman because you're like i know where he's going to be i know where my target's going to be at this time so you can like set it up so it all falls down you're just like i have the perfect escape he said it much better in like an eight minute video but uh also to add to that uh hitman's it seems like they really are trying to do some cool shit like um, the, we haven't really alone. we haven't really messed with it, but there's elusive targets which are like mm-hmm. appear like every so often. I think it's either every week or every like month. Yeah, it's it's supposed to be when it's ep- you know episodic. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Side note, you want to talk about the biggest risks of this year? Uh, it's basically game. putting out an no. episodic so, game like Hitman. That's and then, actually, a sixty dollar game. So uh, just to wrap up this point, like there was also the holiday level where you got to you got to kill the two burglars from Home Alone. Um, Honestly, like wasn't even the best part of the, the level. Santa Claus randomly appears in the level and he'll like randomly teleport to different locations and different fireplaces on the map. You can find Santa Claus and guess what you can do? You can brutally murder the fuck out of him, take his suit and then murder the fuck out of everyone else. So actually, if you do all of the challenges for the holiday levels, they don't count towards like the main like Paris level. They count towards like a special like thing. And uh, I did all of the challenges, so now any level I can dress up as in the Santa suit because that's just the thing I unlocked. And, you know, I just, I'm not going to use it. It's just, I like having the ability to do it. Or oh, you could kill Gary Busey. Yeah, that's another one. Gary Busey's an elusive target. Could have been Gary Coleman. I think, we all no, yeah, Gary, Gary Coleman's in the level too, I think. Oh, he's just not the elusive target? Yeah. Or not I think one of the targets? He's, he's, I think he's one of the targets. You're supposed to kill Gary Busey, but. You can follow Gary Coleman to get to Gary Pusey. Um, so just to wrap this up, though, about Hitman, even though it's Carlos's point, um, I think people should be really like the fact that this episodic is so satisfying. People should really be OK with the way Final Fantasy seven is going to be released. Ooh, that's going to I think actually I might hop on a Final Fantasy because, seven episode because people are saying like, oh, how are they not going to release it all at once? First of all, because the game would be like it's a terabyte. And second of all, it would take. They'd have 10, to send you a new console. It would take ten years to develop. Have fun downloading that day one on the PSN. And then, but uh, but more than anything, the fact that I got so much content with the, each episode. Granted, we are not playing it episodically, so like we have the benefit of hindsight. I honestly think we would be fully satisfied with it in episodic, though. Um, I think Final Fantasy VII is going to do fine. I think whatever they release at a time is going to be more than enough. Um, Just because it gives you the chance in between. To play other games and not feel, like, guilty. Not only that, but you can go complete all the side quests. Then, like, once they announce when the next story mode is, you can go and actually do the story mode so it's fresh in your mind and then continue on. Because, like, part part of the problem I have with, like, Fallout or Witcher, something like that, you're doing a bunch of other side shit. And then you forget what the main story is. And then when you come back to the main story, you're just like, but what is happening? That doesn't happen with me, but okay. But also, you also don't know how close you are to the end. At least with... When you're near the final episode, it's like, I only got one more episode. I know there's... I guess that's true. All right. Spencer, Spencer. out of nowhere. Out of nowhere, honorable mention to win fucking jammers being re-released on the PS4. None of you, I don't think anyone of you know what jammers. It's very personal to me. When I got announced at PSX, I almost flipped this desk over. (laughs) So it's like, what? Ape Escape 2 could have been for me. Yes, exactly. So I hope they don't screw it up. But the most out of nowhere thing, fucking Doom. Doom has no fucking right being the modern Doom, not the old Doom, the Doom that got released this the year. The original Doom. Has the original no Doom right. has no right being as good as it is. No, the Doom that got re- released this year 
is it just hits. I almost didn't play this, and it was gifted to me. I'm like, you know what? I think I would like Doom, and someone gifted it, because it's like 20 bucks right now. It's almost always on sale. It's always on sale. I, um, Go yeah. play it. I opted to um, to finish Uncharted 4 instead of playing Doom, um, but I was absolutely going to check it out, because I've heard it's I've heard this about Titanfall 2 and Doom this year, over and over, is that they're just unexpected hits that people weren't expecting anything from, and honestly, they're getting buzz, I think, from word of mouth more than anything, which is that powerful medium that... The, dead, been, the dead Rising <laughs> 1. <laughs> The what? Dead Rising 1 was initially, it was a big word of mouth. No one thought that it was going to be successful. I think it was word of mouth before it came out, though. I remember being hyped for Dead Rising before it came out because it's just Dawn of the Dead stuck in a mall. Like, Guys are cutting into my doom time. <laughs> okay, back to your doom time. I guess you could say this conversation was doomed from the start. Stop it. <laughs> um, That game, when it was actually it was in development, it was actually announced around 2009. And it went into development hell. And no one expected to come out. After Doom 3, have you ever played Doom 3? I've played the demo. It's, it's garbage. It's it's not it's not good. It was more of like a tech demo. Have you seen anything. the Doom documentary? Uh, from Noclip? Yeah. Uh, I saw some of it. I haven't seen I was going to wait till I finish the game. To, uh, that's that's actually what I've done too. I started watching. I'm like, you know what? I want to appreciate this more. Well, they're probably going to go in a whole bunch of stuff. I watched the beginning of it. The stuff that I know mm -hmm. they were talking about. Uh, this game went into development hell. And, and then they released... Like almost close to its initial launch, a multiplayer beta, and everyone was like, "This is shit. It looks nice. This this is just not good." And then they didn't give anyone release copies, which usually is a sign of like, "Oh, like oh, usually you know, man, yeah, usually a this is gonna be a bad game." And then everyone started playing like, "This is this is good. This is surprisingly good." And I didn't jump on the bandwagon at first, and I bought it when it was on, or excuse me, I got gifted to it when it was on sale. The first. Eight minutes, eight to ten minutes of that game beat almost any moment of game I played all this year. It's just so good, so self-aware. The characters, you, you they basically put character into a soulless character, the Doom guy. The Doom guy doesn't give a fuck. He will, you're like, listen, I'm the Doom guy. I don't like demons. This shit's done before. You guys keep raising hell up on Mars. I've done this four times, four to five times now. It's got to fucking stop. So there's times where there's a scientist named um, Samuel Hayden, I think he's called. Mm -hmm. He goes, listen, we've, we're now taking the science out of hell and we're actually doing all this thing. We're like giving energy to mankind, uh, but hell's going to come on Earth, so you need to stop these generators. So I'm like, okay, I'll go stop the generators. But the Doom guy doesn't stop the generators by going and flicking a switch. The Doom guy comes over and goes, so these, this is what's causing hell to come on Earth? Okay. And he's fucking smashes the thing. <laughs> and he said, was like, hey, you are going to do mankind. Uh, no pun intended. You are going to do mankind if you break all of these generators. And you're like, yeah, but you see, demons, and I'm the doom guy, and uh, I've done this before, and I know what's going to happen. And you just break, keep breaking every single one. And that's just the story stuff of the, of the, of the game. The gameplay is is smooth the shooting is great it does it per second on uh ps4 oh yeah and like on pc like it's i even wrote you put it on like the mediums on ps did i say it's ps4 or is I, it pc I did. oh sorry i said pc um on pc like i put it on medium because i have like my graphics are like oh I'll put it on ultra i'm like okay and then i got curious one day i'm like what it looks like on medium and it's all, the only thing that's gone is like the particle effects and the texture is a little bit lower. And the game runs phenomenally on ultra as it does on medium. So it's highly optimized. The gameplay is smooth. You shoot somebody. It feels great. You break someone's neck open. It feels great. And the way that they keep the game going by doing a glory kill and giving you a little bit of health or a little bit of ammo or getting a chainsaw. It just, the whole game just flows when it shouldn't do. The only thing I will say is it's too long. Uh, yeah, a game like that is better in a short burst. Well, the, the story kind of keeps it pulling along, but it's one of those things where you get to a certain point, like, ah, oh, just kidding, you gotta do this. Ah, oh, but it has two of those, just kidding, now you're going to hell. Ah, oh, just kidding, now you're gonna go to this. Oh, just kidding, this is the real boss now. And then uh, the ending of it, actually, I was sitting there like, well, okay, cool, this. Thing. And then I sat there, I'm like, he's saying, I remember this, and... I'm not going to spoil it for anybody because you definitely should go play Doom again. It's only 20 bucks. But he quotes something to you. 75 gigs on PS4. Yeah. Oh, it's like 60 something. And even then it took a long time for me to download. But it's worth that. I mean, that's a storage, that's a storage issue aside on consoles. But on a PC, 
I mean, it will take a long time to download, but it's worth it because it's just, it looks so fucking pretty. So again, it came out of nowhere for me. A PC that can run it. Yeah. yeah. If, only, nice you, if only you guys, I actually don't have a collared shirt, but if only you guys were such elitists. All right. Like myself. So Doom. Just fucking You're out of nowhere. Doom. <laughs> just interrupting him. Uh, mine is Stardew Valley. Uh, just dude worked on it all on his own for years. Can't, released it. I played it on PC when it released, so, which also came out this year. I just bought it again on PS4. I'm enjoying it just the same, if not more, on PS4. Mm. Uh, just throw on a podcast, movie, TV show, whatever, and just fucking farm. It is such stupid fun, and I hate that I like it. <laughs> Now, my question to you is, did you play Harvest Moon or any yeah. of those type of games? Uh, so well, it, scratching that itch, or is it so like a different I, So itch? I played um, Harvest Moon, uh, A Wonderful Life Special Edition, which is the only one I liked. And it was like um, it was like a different version of the the Harvest Moons. Like, normally, they're, they actually, normally they look like Harvest Moon, where they're, or like Stardew Valley, where it's like 2D, and it's just like you run from map to map. Was this the N64 one? This was the GameCube and PS2 one. Oh, um, and it was just it was 3D, and you'd like run around on a 3D plane. I really enjoyed that. Um, and I couldn't really get into any other Harvest Moons. I couldn't. I never got into any of the like, other ones like Rune Factory or stuff like that. And Stardew Valley, for some reason, is like the perfect, like, th- the perfect mix. Where I think, honestly, I believe anyone who hasn't even played a Harvest Moon can get into it. Um, cause it's just like, it's, it starts off so well, um, and just builds at such a great pace. Like it's so well paced. Um, and it's just like, you're working, it's like, um, I'm trying to think it's, it's like the Minecraft kind of mentality of just we're working on small things at a time with an overarching goal, um, or overarching goal in the background. I'm sorry, am I boring you, Carlos? No, I actually just getting more. Um, and it's just like, it's awesome. It's everything I wanted to be. I took a, a chance on it. I'm watching a stream of it. Like I watched a full like 17, 18. What is stream wrong with you? While playing it, so like it was just in the background, or like while I was playing something else. Oh, I thought you were watching. No, like, I, I, I thought you were watching the Stardew Valley stream while you played Stardew Valley. Like, well, that, that I am doing. That's mess. Yeah. Oh, why? Why are you enjoying the? Do you have one on your? Do you have the stream on your phone? The game running on your console and the game running on your laptop? Just no. so you're full. <laughs> just the well, I, I, I do it. Uh, the game on console and then like watching it on TV, like. Like, or on my uh, laptop when I'm playing on console. Why is that weird? I'm just like listening just, to the content. It's just in the background. And I just feel like there's too much Stardew Valley for one person. No, not really. Not it's, one man should have all that Stardew Valley. No, it was, a good, <laughs> it was a good thing where there's like a special shop that opens on Sunday. And uh, I was listening to that one. Someone, because they're, it's like a, uh, a Twitch like re upload. Someone in their chat mentioned, oh, yeah, be sure to vis- visit the special store on Friday and Sunday. I was like, what? I didn't realize. I, I got in like a good couple months in the game. I was like, Oh shit, it's open on Friday too. That sounds like the classic Harvest Moon too. It's like, by the way, the fortune teller only comes on Mondays. Yeah. And you only find that, and back in the day, you would only find that out. If, you know, if you looked at a guide or anything, now it seems like, you know, you can go on a stream, you go on word of mouth. Like, Reddit or anything. It's still like, like it's still, I mean, I guess you might find it in something like things I wish I knew about Stardew before playing. Mm. But it's like, for the most part, it's like you're finding it out through your own anyway. Because mm. you can't really search for these kind of things. You're like, oh, is... Is there a special shop that's only open on certain days? Like, there's no, like, Googling that kind of stuff. So, I'm loving it. I want everyone to play it. Um, and I'm just, again, I'm probably going to play when I go home. I'm really enjoying it. Game? Game of all the time this year. Um, it's game of the year time. It's time. Go to go to To deliberate game of the year. Um not deliberation. We're not picking a list here. We're just saying what we like. I guess. I will fight your opinion, though. It may be wrong. Uh, it's not. So I'll go first. My game of the year, Ratchet and Clank, hands down. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I picked Ratchet and Clank for the game of the year, and because uh, when you have categories like best story, best gameplay, and game of the year, it's tough not to give it to like the same game or like to it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, um, excuse me. Ooh, um, there you go. My insides are dying and I'm hungry. Um, I'm starving too. <laughs> also, it's like nine, so. So what? Yeah, we, we're going to cut this close to wherever we go eat. That's true. Um, so, yeah, Rush and Clank, I gave a game of the year because it's the best complete package. Um, best take. It's. Yeah. <laughs> so it's. Uh, I thought the story was really good. I thought the gameplay was great. It had great replay value. Um, and it's by us playing it seven times combined. Yeah. <laughs> I um I 
it was a really fun platinum. Like I, they, that Insomniac's was... good about trophies that are just like, not only is it like beat the game, upgrade all weapons and stuff like that. If they're doing weird shit like taking Groovatron on every enemy, that was the only <laughs> that was the only trophy I did not like. But every other that was utter bullcrap. It's because you keep on throwing out every fight, thinking you're gonna get everyone. Yeah. At least the first time for me, why I had to play it four times. You think it's like literally on every pal- uh, planet, so mm-hmm. you literally have to get into the. Uh, so here's you throwing it out every fight. Here's the yeah. re- here's the reason why that's worse than it should be. It, they've had that trophy ever since they've introduced the Kurvachan as like a regular weapon, which was in Kraken time. I think the trophy they actually only introduced the trophy uh, in the game that came before this, which was Into the Nexus, mm-hmm. and uh, there was a shorter game, so like you could do it. But more than that, enemies respawn. So, like, you could just be like, oh, I missed this enemy, so I'll go and, like, get them. In the Roger Clank remake, enemies don't respawn for some reason. So, like, you can revisit a world after beating it, and just it's just kind of devoid, which is one of the things I didn't like. I like the ability to, like, go back, especially if you're trying to, like, level up your weapons or something. So, the fact that enemy, enemies didn't respawn was kind of like, all right, that's weird. I don't know why that, that's not a thing. Um, but... Yeah, I just thought it was like it was. It scratched every itch I had, and I'm a huge Ratchet and Clank fan. I've played every single one except for uh, Oliver One or the PSP ones because those aren't real. No, um, and you know I've platinumed one, two, three, Deadlocked, Crack in Time, Into the Nexus, like and the originals. That's seven platinums, Ratchet and Clank. Like I love the series to death, so I had high expectations going into this, and it met them completely. Um, couple th- like i played the original and the original weirdly enough is the weakest of the series now like the very first one that came out um and they fixed a lot that was wrong with it and they improved on a lot of crazy things like they made the visuals so much better but um for the story elements since they're kind of taking bits from like the first three for the story would you say yeah. the first three? they're trying to make in my mind they're trying to make they're trying to fix the, t- the time yeah so that way na- it naturally fits having uh what the crazy doctor fit now in every yeah. single game. Which is which is fine. I didn't mind him being the, the villain at the end. Um, I did miss uh, Drek's original voice. They had like a Paul Giamatti slash Paul Giamatti impersonator because of the movie tie-in. Uh, but the original voice of... I can't remember his name. I forget his name every time. He has a very deep voice. He's the guy who voices the principal in uh, American Dad. And he uh, voices Gantu and Lilo and Stitch. Like the really, really deep voice black dude. Um, and... I just because he's been in a bunch of like voice actor documentaries, cool. um, and I just I really liked his, and I liked in the original. I this is kind of a spoiler, but not really. In the original, there was a point in the game where Clank and Ratchet, Clank and Ratchet, like hate each other most of the game. Yeah, most of the first game they don't like each other until and, they don't even like each other really to the second game. And they had like a moment um, where um, they get into a fight, like in, like they, they're literally like angry at each other, and um, that didn't happen in this version like they just like instantly became best friends which is fine i guess but i liked the conflict that bred friendship before so that's but, how nick likes his friendship with violence yes <laughs> a little bit of conflict for the bit. um game games was a mistake but <laughs> <laughs> whoa the deepest cuts the deepest lore i'm just kidding um, all right that's for the people who managed to stay with us this long thank um, you by the way <laughs> you're welcome <laughs> Uh, I was talking to them, not you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I really enjoyed it. And uh, on a reverse the order, Spencer is up next. Yeah, I know. Because I don't want to talk about Uncharted 4 yet. All right. Oh, we can have a big, giant We're Uncharted. We're going to have a big, giant conversation. That was, it's, I actually, I was telling these guys before, I didn't know what I was going to do for Game of the Year. It's, Uncharted. It's, it's always been Overwatch. It's going to be Overwatch. It's, it's not going to be Overwatch. Overwatch. It's going to be, it's it's not. It's gonna be Doom. If you, if you asked, if you told... Like Spencer from like early in the year, Overwatch is not gonna be win any of the game of the year things that we talk about. He would have told you you're a fuckface and go back to the future <laughs> and change it. I think Spencer would have more questions for me if I came with the future. Yeah, no, he really you're wouldn't. Pretty, you're He'd pretty be curious like, guy. Granted, we're only coming back from 2016 to the to the future. Yeah. Of 2016. Donald Trump. <laughs> <president. I> remember, <laughs> wait, 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 who wins the presidency? It's Clinton, right? And you're like, no, it's Trump. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Stop <laughs> lying to me. Clearly some imposter. Uh, if it was like, yeah, if it was like when Overwatch was released, you know, around that time, that's probably what I'm like, you're, you're silly. Anyways, um, politics aside, uh, I, when I was talking about best gameplay, 
I completely remembered everything why, every th reason why I loved Inside. And when I played Inside, it was sweeping across. Uh, I told everyone to go play it. Nick just does not care. I, I care. It's just like, oh, I've seen it played. I'm just like, I don't care. It's just a new, it's just new Limbo. It's, it's, I don't care. It's everything about Limbo and then just amp it up by five. Well, I didn't enjoy Limbo. Then you're just like, ah. Do you like platformers in general? Uh, Ratchet and Clank. Uh, that's, that's true. Uh, it just hit every single note. It has a great style. It knows what it is. It knows what it does. It has great puzzles. It has great platforming. Uh, the little stuff, everything about Play Dead in, turn, like, in Limbo and this game is just so subtle. Like it's little movements, little thing. Like when you, if you stand still in certain spots, like they didn't have to program it. Like uh, some of the things that he does. Like, nobody does this, where there's a big scene where you're coming down two buildings and all the drone people are kind of walking in a goose-step kind of line. And if you just stop there, he kind of looks around and looks over. I even know it's a bad thing because I'm not talking to the microphone. <laughs> he just looks and he stops and he's just kind of looking back and forth. They didn't have to program that at all, but it just adds everything. And so there would be times where I just stop and go, I wonder what he does here. Or now, you know, I wonder what happens if I do this. So it got me questioning everything, and then, like I said, the giant blob monster is just amazing. There's technology. The I, was giant, loved, I always love talking about tech, quote unquote technology. Uh, he gets a little bloodied at one point, and then he falls in water, and then the water, and then he's all washed off. But like, there's points where like you'll fall off a, a high cliff, an arm will fall off, and like a leg will fall off, and like I still I want a documentary about how the hell they programmed the giant nutsack with arms and legs. Hit a no it, clip. It's, I, I would tell Daniel Dwyer to go, I need you to go find Play Dead, because I think Play Dead's kind of scattering now. I know at least the, I think the director left. Um, the OG, like, who started the company is leaving. Um, I, I implore you to go play it. It's one of the games. Overwatch was close. Uncharted 4 was close. Uncharted 4 was like the same thing. It was just too long. Doom was just a little bit too long. Overwatch, 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 it's great. Oh, it hits everything. <laughs> We'll talk about it when Carlos finish up the inside point. Because we're going to rip into Uncharted 4. I'm like, going to Overwatch. I was going to the Overwatch. Deep into it. Okay. Um, Overwatch just hits on every every little tiny thing. I love team-based shooters. And it has great characters, blah, 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 blah. But inside, it just does all of everything that it does. All the other things does wrong. It make it does them better. It does them, it does them good. Is if un if uh, Overwatch somehow had a story mode, would that push it ahead? No. It should yeah. not have a story mode. <laughs> and, they, they, and Blizzard knows that it should have a story mode. Um, they just enough. made a team-based shooter and then put the lore in the back end and have everyone either get mad about it or whatever. Okay, that's fair enough. Inside, Game of the Year for Spencer 2016. So let's take a look inside Carlos's Game of the Year pick. All right. Fellas. Gender non-conforming people. <laughs> Ladies. I was going to say, you skipped women. I was just, you know. 2016 has been quite a year. Prince died. Prince died. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Carrie Fisher died a day ago. Yeah, but Prince died. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. Jesus Christ, Prince. Uh, David Bowie. David Bowie. Prince. <laughs> anyway. I love how the two white guys were like David Bowie. <laughs> and the one black guy was like, Prince. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are racist. We are, we are a little bit racist. It's been a tough year, but... So, so let me get first two honorable mentions out of the way. I was thinking, Diaz, yeah, I don't give a fuck. You were breaking... We've not talked... To, I've, like, skimmed honorable mentions. All right, we are... Skim yeah, honorable skim, mentions. Skim. Is, I want to put Deus Ex Mankind. I, I just thought people should play that. And Watch Dogs 2, I thought... People should go get that. Didn't play it, and although a lot of people were saying, "Oh that. man, that it's currently downloading on my PS." Literally yeah. fixed every single problem I ever had with the Watch Dogs, and was like, "Here's an even better game." Mm. It's weird that some of my favorite game, not to break you off, but mm. it's weird. I feel like we all had like a game that we really, really enjoyed that just didn't make the list. Like Titanfall Two didn't make my list. And I played the fuck out of it. Yeah, and you played the fuck out of Overwatch. Didn't make the list. Yeah, and like I said. Past Spencer would be pissed right now. Last year, we were struggling to get things on it. Yeah, yes, we were. God, there's been so, <laughs> been so many games this year. The, yeah, this year was really great for games. And so, Uncharted 4, I've been, I, I've actually been trying to get that off as my game there. Because I was like, everyone, I'm, I'm a big Uncharted fan. I'm a big 
Naughty Dog fan. Like, Naughty Dog could put out a game called Poop Simulator 3000. I'm like, it was I'd, the best poop I, simulator. I, I, I would pre order, I'd get the day one digital, I'd get even, I'd probably even go with the special poop statue that they come with in the game. It'd be a big turd walking around with a little turd telling him how to But you know, works. they would mocap the shit. They just, they'd have Voice Troy, acted by Nolan North himself. <laughs> Troy Baker would be shitting it out. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, this is it. This is what I want. <laughs> but Uncharted 4, I was just like, that. that is the perfect way to end Uncharted for me. Like, it was literally... Because I know one thing. People were like, oh, they didn't kill anyone. I'm like, Uncharted isn't death. Right. It so, is a happy series. So. And if you take away that happiness, bull, okay, hold on. So, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to stop your flow. Bullshit! That guy is a psychopathic murderer, hang, killing everybody hang on, hang in on. that game. Hang on, hang on it hang is on. not a happy Spencer, game. Spencer, Spencer, <laughs> just to clear this up, we're gonna get really deep in Uncharted. When did it come out? What year? What month? Uh, it came out in uh, June. Right. June. We May. almost got into it in June. I hadn't played it yet. Now I've played it. Now we're gonna get into it because it's, it's Carlos' game of the year. I think we all have things we want to say about it. We just it, have so. to shit on my game of the year for that. Yes. I just, I just want to say because everyone, so, it's a happy-go-lucky story. It's only a happy story until wanna, the end. So <laughs> no, it's happy-go-lucky if you're not getting. I want to point something out that I kept track of. Um, during the last chapter, I looked at my statistics. I had killed 721 people. No, in there's one infographs. Picture. There are infographs over all of the games. So I'm sorry. I, I, I okay. Continue. Continue. That aside. I think Uncharted 4, uh, did I did say how I think Uncharted 4 is art. I'm potentially, at this point in my life, I'm comfortable enough to say that Uncharted 4 is the best Uncharted game. And Better than 2. I would agree. I'd say better than 2 because I, I love the parts of Uncharted where you're not, where you're just kind of chilling and walking around exploring the environment. It feels like I'm actually the explorer. Like, I'm looking in a corner and like, oh... I see something, hit the triangle button, Nate says something to Sam, and Sam's just like, well, what did you think of that? And then, well, Nathan, I don't know what we're <laughs> Yeah, it, it just, it felt natural, it felt great, and then you have the flashback scenes, which I thought were amazing, and then Elaine was like, literally the best character, because she was just like, I'm yep. coming in here, I'm fucking shit up, you lied to me, man, you lied to me, and I was just like, I was, I was upset with Nate, but I was also like, but yo, you gotta hear both sides, you... No, but baby, no. Because it was, I, it was literally the because meme, I was, know you in real life. And and me, it was literally the meme where it's like she's making a bunch of valid points. Let me look her dead in the eyes and just go, wow. <laughs> so you're talking about some so fine. I love I'm the saying. characters. I love I, no characters that are great strong points of the game. The gameplay of this game is the problem I have. Is where I have the most problems with. I love the set pieces. I dreaded every half an hour to 45 minute climbing in between story parts. I like it when there's narrative going on. Fine. When there's the back and forth. But it's then when that's not happening. When it's just silence of just like, oh, I think we got to find the way around here somewhere. But they give you a vague clue. Love and it's it. just like climbing forever and ever. I'm just like, I don't play Uncharted for the climbing and the set pieces. I play it for the weird treasure hunter stories and I'm just sitting here I'm like I hate this god damn it. I will say they fixed a problem I had before where you could only go through one set path for each like climbing section now there are like multiple different ways you can just skip right up you can use the stabby thing where you like stab into the rock so there are multiple ways to get up which fixed a big problem where it was just like oh you have to get this one tiny rock in this one section uh, even though there's this big expansive wall but I hate, I didn't like that. I didn't like that the slot like in the beginning, like chapter eight. There's like twenty sliding sections back to back, and Live then for it. and then Nate says something like, "Ah, oh, I hope we didn't have to slide again. I've got so much gravel in my ass." Like that's funny, but you're trying to mask bad game design of just using the same fucking thing over and over. And it's like they did that a couple of times with the dialogue between Nate and Sam, where it's like I don't think that's every bad time. Game design. No, yeah, I do think it is. I think they're reusing things way too many times. Like, but. My thing is, I live in the median between you two, where I live for the thing that Carlos says, where I love the climbing, but I actually like the climbing parts. I love the story. I like the shooting. I like the treasure hunting thing. My thing is that it just took, it, like I said, Uncharted 4 was, it's like, there's a second, there's three second places for my uh, game of the year, and Uncharted 4 is one of them. The biggest thing was the pacing. It there's too was many, bad. there's too many 
like you get to a shooty part and then in between was exploration and jumpy jumpy jump it just seemed like there was too much in between between shooty and story and I, yes climb around. I'm, I'm, up to the point where and i like the slide puzzle i loved i actually like the slide puzzles i love the platforming puzzles and everything it just i liked it long game. i liked it sparingly it's just like doing it so many times in repetition no i was um, i was literally to the point where i was like I enjoyed Uncharted 4 so much to the point where I was like, we could take the shooting parts out and I'd be... Oh, I'd so, be no, so, so yeah, I would say you're crazy on that. So that's the thing. is We got... To, is every time... I and there was only to, really one big set, every, two set pieces. Every right time there. I would hear, like, the like it's just like, oh, we got more enemies and stuff like that. I'd be like, God damn it. It takes so long and there's such bullet sponges and I'm made of paper and I hate it. It's just like I just it's just me sitting in cover, shooting away as much as I can. I gotta restart, shooting away. I've played up I don't bump down from hard to moderate. And I was still just like, oh my god, I'm made of paper. Like just let me take a couple uh, bullets. Grapple? For what? Like just the melee parts? I was I I, 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 I was scalping people up and beating no, that's them up. The thing. I was to the point flying where I was, through the map like I was Spider Man yeah. talking dudes out. To the point where I was forced to play stealth. Like because it's just like you don't really have an option. Like, well, you story, have to play Story-wise, it makes sense. Well, I was going to say, the story-wise, they kind of encourage you to be like, take some dudes out. Them. That's what I did. As if I didn't, wasn't able to immediately Stealth take some until it goes out, wrong. Stealth yeah. until it goes wrong. Which is what, you know, I would do. But then there would just be, like, that one dude who was just like, if I just shoot him just right, I can kill him. And just like, no, this is real life. You don't get one bullet off on me and I'm dead. Like, what the fuck? So, I don't know. I should say, I like the game. Uh, I just... <laughs> I had a lot of issues with it. I don't, I think I've come to, like, I told this to Carlos. <laughs> there was a, there was a point yesterday when I was playing and I was just like, I, like I had gone to see Rogue One with Carlos. I got to, I got home at 11. I slept, or I got home at close to 11. I was asleep at like 1130, woke up at seven, got a full night's sleep. And then I played from like seven to two. And by two in the afternoon, I was so fucking bored with the game from the climbing sections and the shooting that I fell asleep for seven hours and I woke up and I was like, it's like 11 at night now. And I'm just like, all right, well, uh, Uncharted fucked up my sleep schedule because it bored me to sleep. Just plain simple. How did you, how did you run through Uncharted? Because I just want to compare it to. Oh, right. I should, I should make it clear. I played back in June until like chapter eight and then I put it down and then picked it up again and basically ran through it in like the last two days. So the way I normally play Uncharted games, it's, as we said before, or as Nick said before, it's stuff until you screw up. No, 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 I meant like time-wise, like literally oh, like... Oh, boom, like I would, I played it in, I think I played it in two sessions. I beat probably two-thirds of the game, got tired because it was like the middle of the night, went to work, came back, and finished it. I just wasn't, it just didn't hook me in like that. Like I was just kind of like... I, Every Uncharted has been like this, where it's just like I start playing, I'm just like I'm bored. Like I don't know. Have you you've played the other ones? I, I've played, played all four. Mm. Like um, and I'm just like I just. It's all your fault, by the way, that I got into Uncharted. It's, it's <laughs> one, you bought me Uncharted one for my birthday. Ooh. It was back when you worked at GameStop, so you're getting everything like eighty percent off. So actually, you got me that and Bioshock. Can I actually tell you the story of how I gave you Uncharted? Huh? Uh, I was working for GameStop. You could there was like a PlayStation rewards program and uh, I had done enough surveys online where I earned a couple free games and one of them was uncharted. And I just, I just didn't like it or no, I just, I didn't even like want to play it. So I just wrapped it up with you. I went and bought Bioshock. I wrapped them in like, what was it? Like 20 GameStop giant bags. Yeah. Like a joke. And I just gave them to you. So like I got uncharted for free. <laughs> he didn't even love you enough to actually buy it. And I don't blame you. If I got free game, I still you pawn that off. That's, I gave you Africa. You did give me Africa. You paid for Africa, though. It was like a buck. No, it wasn't. It was like twenty dollars. Jesus fucking Christ! I actually spent my how are we friends. <laughs> so um, but the best thing I will say about the game of the year, you two like like your your game was Ratchet and Clank. You two love Ratchet and Clank, and then I never played it. I like choosing indie stuff. Because I know you two guys will never play it, and I can be like, oh, this is the greatest game ever. And you're like, well, I can't say anything I mean, that about it. Inside. And then we've all played Uncharted, and we're like, Carlos, your game is shit. <laughs> it's very similar to last year. Where it was yeah. like, I played Heaven's Ward, and none of you had played it. And then I forget what you played last Underdale. year. Undertale. 
I'm gonna, I'm, gonna tell you, I'm gonna find the most random ass games now. I'm like this. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> Carl, Carlos. It's a benefit because like you like oh that Dragon Cancer. You've heard of it. You've never seen, it, but like man, it's the best story. And you're like, well, I guess I'll have to I, take Spencer's word for it. I missed last year where we all three of us had played Metal Gear Solid Five, and we both took turns just being like Carlos. This game is broken, and he's just like, it's my game of the year. Yeah, know. it's it, it's a repeat of last year. It's like this is my game of the year. We're like, I'm like, okay, yeah. And you're like, this is a shit game. Carlos, you have shit taste. Let's go get burger. No, I think the Uncharted games are a solid like nines or like eights even. But I'm just like, they're just not for me. Tens. Every single one of ten. They're just not for me. That's Actually, all. Uncharted three is an eleven. I'm joking. Uncharted two, I would say is I two is the probably oh, the best case to say it was right. a ten at the time. It is yeah. at the time. This I would is, say the best case. This to is be. not a spoiler, but I'll, I'll. It's kind of a spoiler, but I don't care. Um, I will give Uncharted four credit for not taking the supernatural route. Like the first three, it was like the first one was like. Oh, and there's first magic. Du- there's ma- no, I know. The first one's like there's magic dust that turns people into monsters. Second one's there's a magic tree that turns people into giant blue people that you can only kill with crossbows. And then there's a third one where it's like they they do the fake out where they say like um, where you think there's like all of a sudden monsters with like fucking flaming heads and stuff, but you're just hallucinating. True so, balls, man. So you're like weaning off the supernatural, and then four, no supernatural whatsoever. I honestly think that's when the game shined the most. Like, the supernatural stuff always felt really out of place to me. Oddly enough, I felt the supernatural only really worked well in one. Because one, one is the most, like... That's the, you're, that's you're, the one where it's the most... Oh, no, no, no you're shooting the most in one. Like, there's literally, like, you can't go five steps without a gunfight. And then you're just like, all right. In two, there's, what, like, five of them you have to kill or something like that? Yeah, five. In two, they don't come up until literally, like, like the, second the, last clo- the closing moments of that game. It's just... It's, you, do, it's, you kill those guys, you do the boss fight, and then it's done. So they don't really they don't really last around that much. Granted, I do enjoy in two, like, when you run into Shangri-La, you're just like, oh, my God, this is fucking gorgeous. And, like, so yeah, don't, four doesn't have that. Don't let my criticism... I'm criticizing it because it's so popular. Um... But like that's my thing. I'm the hipster of this. Trio. Oh wait, we're gonna show them popular games. Let's show them some popular. Games. No, but it's just like it's just because everyone seems to really enjoy them. It's like I just I, for whatever reason I don't really, really, they don't click with me. Granted, I forgot my my runner up to still a bad game was gonna be GTA Five. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Closing thoughts as we hit the two hour mark. I'm sorry for it. I gotta rush out and go play it. No. <laughs> After all those awesome hot takes, yeah. Uh, what what actually? What Spencer said. I didn't even get to defend it. I didn't get to. I was like, I was just gonna say, I love it. Yeah, that's all your defense is, though. No, yeah. but th- I have some solid points of why I love this game. Okay. I enjoy. Uh, actually, I did not really look because when I first started on chart four, I was much like yo, like this isn't really grabbing me. I was just like, I know it's gonna be on chart it. It's gonna grab. It's gonna grab me by the dick at one point. <laughs> So it, unexpectedly, but warranted, or is just that a you good, know it's coming? Is that a good thing? You wore your best suit. Just yanking the dick away, like it's like grabbing like, you by the dick does not sound great. Anyway, <laughs> they're not pulling you. It's not like a goat to That's water. That's what I thought he meant. So like, as soon why a goat? That's not Carlos, a, okay. Goat, <laughs> when a goat to water is not a. Carlos, Carlos, go. <laughs> when you're at the auction, yeah. when you're at the auction, I was just like, all right, cool. We're doing doing classic uncharted things, walking around doing stuff. And then once the gunfight actually starts, I'm like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. Knocking dudes' heads out. And then when you sling in from, like, after meeting Nadine, well, actually, after Nadine whoops your ass, then I was just like, this is Uncharted. Let's Uncharted up. And then I continually enjoyed how there there weren't giant set pieces every five minutes to continually thrust, thrust the plot along into really awkward moments. Like, I remember Uncharted 2... You're chased by that helicopter, but they don't really explain why a helicopter's chasing you. They're just like, that literally felt like, this is a, in here because it's cool. And then you get on the train, and like, they still don't make it clear that you're trying to save Chloe, despite you're trying to save Chloe, which leads to another great point. But like, and also Uncharted 4 it actually had character development for Nathan. Most of the games, Nathan just stays the same and gets the girl. That one, he actually was just like, the way I'm living is wrong. I need to change the way. I-. Like, in Uncharted 3, he kind of gets around that. But even then, at the end, he's just like, Who, what you going to do with me? Uncharted 4, he's legitimately like, nah, I need to give this up. People are going to die. But not really, because... Well, it's, it's, it's the journey of yeah. him being like, oh, I'm a normal man. But he just wants to do it one more time for, you know... I, we can spoil Like, it. you're on the treasure he ship, to, and he's literally just like, I don't care about this. Like, I'm just getting my brother getting yeah, the fuck out of here. Well, that's because he realizes, like, 
he realizes that the, at the end the of the The real game, treasure is friendship and love. It's his it's family. It's but, more, I don't want to die for this. Yeah. It's because that's what uh, his wife just is like, listen, you're going to die. Or someone's going to die. Or I'm going to die. Something. I don't no, I don't want to see any more people die. You know, in this, in this whole life that you're living, this crazy thing. Like, we gave it up for a reason. And you're just going back to it, even you know you're being selfish and scratching your own itch. I will say I did enjoy the final boss fight when I, when he, when he's coming. I hated the boss fight. Oh, did you both hate it? Oh, that was that was the only part where I was, I was legitimately at the end of the game. I was just like, this isn't good. This yeah, isn't, who, who? I loved the ending. Uh, this no, is no, spoilers. I, let me let me um, let me put it this way. I liked. I didn't like the sword fighting. That felt a little weird to me. But oh, okay. I liked how he would like come at you and he would just be like. Nathan Drake, the discoverer of El Dorado. Nathan Drake, the dis- like the find like the, oh he lives off your he found the lost city of Shambhala. Nathan Drake, the lost city in the depths. I'm just like, yeah, that's me. And he's like, the fucking legend. How angry he was at your success. And I was like, I like this. It's all coming. Okay, to Okay, yeah, now. that was cool. No, the whole ending. the actual gameplay of it. I was literally like, this makes me want to break the controller. Hashtag Uncharted Four. Um, that's just how I felt about the whole game. And then I. Oh god, that ending and the epilogue was great. Crazy. The epilogue is great. I don't want to say anything. I'm avoiding setting of that if anyone wants to. That was spoiled for me. Um, oh really? Yeah. The actually. But I actually, I also played through the entire game thinking that Nate was going to die at the end. I misread a comment, thought that mm-hmm. was a spoiler. So I just like I got to the end, I was like, Nate's still alive. <laughs> so like I got to that section, I was like, Are they gonna come back with Nate like bloody? Like what the fuck's gonna happen here? Mm-hmm. Top game moment. Uh, Titanfall two. Uh, Titanfall's. Future level, second, Uncharted 4, the attic. When you get to... That was pretty cool. I like to get enjoy... to recap game. the series. Yeah. What, I was going to say, one of my... The, I think it's actually the epitome of closing out the series uh, where Nadine comes in like, all right, Nadine, kill... Or what's his name? Uh, Rafe is like, yeah. kill, Dre, or kill both these idiots and let's get this treasure. And she's just like... This is fucking dumb. <laughs> I'm ca- I already got my money. You guys can stay here and die. I'm getting out of this ship. <laughs> this locks the door. <laughs> it's like that is the epitome of the entire story, just summed up. In the only one person who actually moment. got rich is the person who was just like, "Yeah, I'm not doing this." Yeah, just fuck right. all y'all. <laughs> you I mean, all are idiots. I mean, she had 720 of her men murdered. But, yeah. You know. Pretty much. That's going to like, that's gonna be a hard whoo! loss to recoup. Yeah, that's that's guys, like, a, guys, I found treasure. I didn't like 700 your soldiers. Act, well, actually, what to be I fair, that's all subcontracted. They weren't like wage employees. They're all subcontracts. So she doesn't have to pay those anymore. So it's money in her pocket for every t- person you kill. So, also, I love the car level. That shit was beautiful. So, that's Burgers. our game of the year. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're hungry. This, I gotta piss. this is going to be long. Carlos has used the bathroom again. Yeah. Very small bladder. It's been two hours. Bladder like a juju bean. I've also been water. drinking water. So, I'll say this. Everyone says that 2016 was a shit show. I am inclined to agree with you personally and with all the world events that have happened. Great music, great films, great games. I don't joke when I say there's never been a better time to play video games because there's so many things coming out on the horizon. Well, there are some shitty things. There are so many things coming out on the horizon. There's so many new things. People are experimenting. So you will always find something that you want to play. Uh, I'm experimenting. I also just want to close it out with um, I'm aware Digimon Cyber Sleuth came out this year. Did not get any awards. I'm un- unsubscribing. <laughs> it was um, it was good that it came west. I'm happy Digimon is coming west now. Compared to all these other games, it didn't really quite stand up. You should give it the best Digimon of the year. Yeah, best Digimon game of the year. There you award. go. Digimon Cyber Sleuth. But uh, yeah. Best Pokemon game of the year, Digimon Cyber Sleuth. <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, and, well, hold on. That's right. None of us have played Sun and Moon. I did. People might be upset with that and just didn't make anything. No, it didn't make anything. Okay. It's, it it very much improved on the formula, but it just it's still it, just Pokemon. it's Pokemon. Yeah, it's a better version of Pokemon. Than Are they it. still poking the mons or no? That's that's a crime. All right, what do you guys want to say? Uh, closing out. I just I said my piece. I already did it. Spencer. You guys. Just... All right, Spencer. Yeah. Black Spencer. <laughs> wow. I mean, uh, that's glasses. racist. Prince uh, died. So yeah. Alpha and Omega ending how we began. Uh, so thank you guys for listening. Uh, we will be sh- we will actually be doing. Don't play Arkham Knight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know when we're gonna do another like regular podcast. Eventually, who cares? Yeah, after um, I play Inside. <laughs> but uh, we will be doing in either March or February a kind of catch up podcast. We're getting to the games. 
we didn't quite get to from 2016 and then reevaluating what happens if I play the Witcher? our game of year. No, let's can that's, I count no. 2015? 2015. <laughs> Basically, we're going to reevaluate our choices and say like do our choices still make sense? I cannot hold this um, anymore. I'm going okay, to go go. Go pay it. Um so we're going to reevaluate well, it and like not. decide um if you know, the, if our choices still hold yeah, up, if, or, or if they we change them, or so, went back and played something else and said shit. Yeah, like I'm playing Let It Die right now, and I'm like, Ugh. so we're gonna reevaluate then. Um, but you know, thought because I think that's a good idea. Mm. If you miss a game, it shouldn't be disqualified. Nope. Um, okay, so that's it. Uh, if Spencer could press the stop button, no, oh, I I don't want to lean over. It's gonna be really awkward. That's all right. Goodbye, everyone. See you in 2017. It's not gonna be better. It's gonna be. It's gonna get. It's gonna, it's gonna get gonna, worse. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. It's-